It is what it is, and what it is is what it is. You feel me? episode 47 on your deck right this moment in time with me and the bro q yeah what's up bro hi 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 what's up guys good week man up, good weekend uh episode what is it 47 47 yeah 47 bro let, 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 let me let me let me do this let me do this shit man shit it's been hot out in these streets i think i'm finished for the year <laughs> Yo, <laughs> I, I I thought I thought I was I thought I was finished for the year, but I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a walk back on that. Oh, well, hold on! Before we get into that, before we get into what Q was gonna say, guys, please do like, follow, subscribe, come and chat to us. Have a, let's have a conversation like we always do, guys, because this is the Shoe Dog Podcast, episode 47. We're putting the work in. Um, give us a like, follow, subscribe. With the bro, 808 Kicks, uh, ATL, with myself, Love Kick Customs. Follow us on all the channels, follow us on all the socials, uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, YouTube, all of that stuff, guys. And I promise you, I'm not I'm not lying to you this time, I promise you, all the audios will be on um, the ne- next couple of weeks because I have leave, I can settle down, I can go through it, I can get it on the audio channels, and then you guys can listen to us on all the podcast channels because that's what the aim of the game is, to make sure you can hear us and you can kind of converse with us. But yeah, go and check that out, guys. And if you do, if you are listening to us, like I said, we're on all the social media platforms, Love, Kicks, Custom, and also... 808 kicks ATO with the bro guys. So do do us a do us a nice thing and follow us and come and have a conversation with us. That's the main thing, guys, isn't it? Really? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. Support yeah. support is free. Like with the type of content that we do, we're not selling we're not selling a product. So you don't have to pay for it. You the hit the like button is free. To hit the subscribe button is free. <laughs> to uh follow us on IG is free. I, I bro, I do think we're starting to get a little bit of a following um in terms of in terms of shoot dog podcast views are going up, which is great because this is what we do. This is we we're not sponsored, we're not we at the moment. No, we're not. But um we, um we're not we're independent and we kind of talk about the real stuff, guys, because um that's what we kind of want to talk about, really. That's what we talk about in on, in general. So why not bring it back to you guys and the masses to have that conversation with us, to bring up subjects that you might not really understand or might not really kind of comprehend during the week. This is us, Shudo Podcast. Raw, uncut, one take, guys. One take. Yeah, now tell us somebody yeah. who does that. <laughs> the, only, the only time that we edit the podcast is when we had technical difficulties. And we only really recently started doing that. Most of the time, we just roll through it. And it's it's all good, but we do not have an editor. We do yeah, not have yeah. a producer. We do not have sponsors. <laughs> Y'all, the supporters are the sponsors. So that's why <laughs> we love we love y'all so much. The people that do come through every week, the people that do get at us on IG. We got our own little group and we got yeah uh, another group of supporters outside of our internal group. So um we just we appreciate everything, man. We're gonna we're gonna keep pushing. But one thing I'm definitely going to say is you guys, every single one of you, ladies and gentlemen, are amazing. Everybody yeah. I've conversed with, everybody I talk to, everybody I meet. We're going to talk about that in this episode because of SneakerCon London. Everybody I meet, guys, you guys are absolutely amazing, phenomenal people. Um, and it's just so much love that comes across. Uh, it's so amazing. And the thing is, I'm a very positive person in general, bro. And you know, you know that. And so I saw you, I think you're in the same mold as I am, but it, I, it kind of shows because when you, when you send that, that positive energy, you receive a lot of love back and it's not yeah. fake, hundred percent, not fake. We are what we are and we can't change what we are because we are <laughs> what we are. Um, and I just love the fact that you guys reach out and have a conversation and we just kind of talk, we go out, we literally got to come back, go out for meals, like group networking, all of that stuff. Bro, it's amazing. And that really was something that was kind of over the last six months to a year that's been growing and growing, which which is great. I love it. I actually yeah. love I'm a very social person and I love that. Absolutely love yeah. that. I, I I woke up like this, man. Like I, I, don't know what to <laughs> I woke up like this. And I tell you what, um, 
we we weren't planning on talking about this, but I got to mention yesterday, Cherry 11 day, December the 10th, seven pairs, bro. Tell them what you did, bro. I was going to say, tell them what you did. You murdered the Cherry 11 situation, bro. Seven pairs. Everybody that asked me for a pair of cherries got a pair of cherries. Shout out to Black. Shout out to Black Cherry for his whole family. Him, his son, his daughter. Uh, his, his wife didn't didn't want a pair. Yeah. Um, shout out to G- 99. G- like all, all the bros got the cherries yesterday it was it was a lot of work it was a lot of so, running so, around. it was a half a take of gas <laughs> but i got it done i left the house at 8 a.m and i yeah, yeah. didn't get back home till like 1 30 <laughs> <laughs> and when i got home i ate and went right back out to go do the drop-offs so, yo bro yo bro literally um you you your name wasn't 808 kicks atl yesterday your name was Santa kicks ATO yesterday because you are, you have a pair, you have a pair, you have a pair. That's what you were doing yesterday, bro. And it was great because I didn't want the shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just based on the fact that I didn't want a pair for myself, I was able, I feel like the fact that I didn't want a pair for myself helped me focus more on everybody else because I wasn't concerned. About, but I came up with three size 11s. <laughs> bro, you want to hear another magical story about the Cherry Elevens? Uh oh, what you got? You, d- no, basically, this is this is um this is what I say. Hunting is uh, in our blood, in our prime. We are shoe dogs for real, for real, for real. Um, Scott Scott came over yesterday. Shout out to the bro, Scott Simpson. You are the bro. Dale came over. We, we went to obviously sneak on London. We'll talk about that in later in this episode. But also, bro, Scott's sister was like eight o'clock in the morning. Can you get me a size GS four and a half? Um, and Ooh. he like, and stay yeah, your bro sold out instantly everywhere online. Um, bang, 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 bang. Scott sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Uh, I did a little search, sold out everywhere, couldn't get it that not, not online. So we went to SneakerCon, and uh, obviously, we, we're not gonna go and spend money on SneakerCon, bros. Like, I'm we'll, we'll discuss that in a bit, but yes, we went to SneakerCon, came out SneakerCon. Sneak, uh, Scott had to pick up another pair from uh, a retailer, so we went there, picked up a pair. We checked that the retailers GS size is all sold out. We we went walked along Oxford Circus, and then came across a um. And there's another little thing uh, uh, near Foot Locker. There was another another resale shop opposite. We'll talk about that as well. Remind me, but um, we found a pair of GS Cherry Elevens in Foot Locker, four and a half UK, five US, hundred pounds. Oh, wow. Bang on the door. Dang, got it, bro. Got it, got it. That was, that was, that was, that was, that's what's up, bro. Like, I literally, Scott was looking for it. Scott said, let's go Foot Locker. Instantly went in, asked the guy, yep, got it, bang. There you go. There you go, bro. Ooh, that's that's yo, what you do. That's what you do. That release for everybody that thought cherries were sweet, they were not. Not yesterday. <laughs> Not to, <laughs> and then uh, to be honest, uh, the Cherry Elevens uh, stood sat around for for the guys in the UK. I know, I know you were saying, bro, in the US, the Cherry Elevens were set up because it's a popular sneaker. Oh, it was, it went crazy, bro! It went yep, absolutely yep. crazy. Once again, once again, um, shout out to everybody that was able to cop. But you get, listen, I don't know if you got yours ready, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pull this out. And I'm gonna have to give a red card to everybody that had bad energy yesterday. Heard from Hemi, shout out Hemi the shoe god, um, who is now a final boss. Hemi, Hemi, uh, <laughs> Hemi is on the UPS truck <laughs> as the final boss. <laughs> really? But Hemi, 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 a good dude, bro. I know he he ain't on that on that bad behavior, but um, Hemi gave but- us firsthand accounts. Um, of of uh, firearms being involved in another release. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but um, there was a reseller who had uh, multiple bodies. And for those of for those of y'all that don't know, um, in the resale culture, bodies means a reseller that pays people to line up to get extra shoes. Yep, 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 yep. And his bodies pretty much booked on him. Oh, and said, nah, bro. 
I'm not, these ain't for you, these for me. I want Shit. These. I'm getting my size. I want these. I don't want your money. I'm not flipping. I'm putting these on toe. And the reseller guy got mad and altercation ensued. So yo, um, bro, let, let's say let's say that for sneaker court. That's another subject we'll say for sneaker court. Business is business. Like let's just, just say that for sneaker court, bro. I, I you just gave me another another case for sneaker court. But bro, as I saying. Cherry, cherries weren't that hard here, bro. Cherries weren't that hard here. You still got a size six, seven, eight um, in stock. I'm pretty sure if you go to the retailers around here, they were sitting everywhere in the retailers. Um, we went to a couple of places. Off, uh, uh, foot, uh, off, foot Locker had them and Offspring. I keep forgetting the name. So they had them online still. Got a couple of pairs floating here and there. So in general, yeah, bro, there, there was pairs. There was definitely pairs. Uh, Unfortunately for, for us in the US, we can't shop on the UK websites anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, so, that's, that's um, I know, I do, so. I do know, know of. I don't know personally, but I know of a couple of people that still want pairs. They couldn't get their hands on. So, um, shout out, shout out to to all y'all, man. That, that was able to pick up pairs, and y'all actually got leftovers. Ain't nothing yeah. over here, bro. <laughs> don't sleep, don't sleep, don't sleep. I know sneakers. Are, I know sneakers are sitting. Um, but I would say if you see a release that comes out, unless it's, unless you know for definite for sure that the sneaker is not hyped or the silhouette's not hyped in, in your region and it's going to sit and it might go on sale, then that's, the, that's a justified reason to sleep on it to get that discount. But if you know if it's if it's 11, if it's a 1, if it's a 4, some 1s as well especially uh, might sit. But if it's a 4, if potentially if it's a 3, potentially, if, I don't know, it, whatever sells out in your region, if it's an Air Max, Make sure you don't sleep if you know it's a, if it's a very exclusive release, um, and then you can get your pairs. And like Q said it last week, Cherry Elevens is going to be a situation in the states, and it was a situation mm-hmm. in the states. So yeah. when we say to it, when you say to you guys, listen to what we say. Um, I know Cherry Elevens are going to sit in the UK. Um, you can get them now. I can walk out in a, right this moment in time and go to the retailers and pick them up. But it's not the same same situation in the states. So make sure you're aware of what's happening in your region, guys. Hundred percent. Because don't sleep on sneakers if you know they will sell out. If if you're in the US and you're watching this, a lot of stores did not get men's pairs. Um, a lot of Foot Lockers. Um, I heard Foot Lockers, not Foot Lockers, but Foot Sites in general. A lot of stores in New York did not get pairs at all. Late shipments. Um, athletes foots stores in Georgia, I know for a fact, did not get any men's pairs, only grade schools. So they will, they, and they follow them on IG because they dropped it. Um, late Friday, they dropped a post that says no men's pairs. So they'll probably get them at some point this week, probably do a release next weekend along with the, um, the nines. So, um, just, let, just let me, keep your head up. <laughs> keep your head up. Keep do your due diligence. Do not go straight to resale because they in the U.S. they're going from anywhere between three twenty five and four hundred. Um, people in the streets, resellers that have pairs, they they know the market and they hitting it right on the head. You gonna pay three twenty five at least. Okay, so. Yeah. Do your due diligence. If you want to get a pair for retail, make sure you stay locked in. Follow all the foot sites you, you can follow. Make sure you, you're looking out for uh, late shipment raffles and whatnot, first come, first serve, and all that, because it's not over yet. It's not yep. over yet. We will see more Cherry 11s in the next couple of weeks. The reason why, if, you, if you're not into sneakers and you're just getting into sneakers, this is why we do this actual podcast. The reason why we do stuff like this is to go in and make you aware of what the situation is um, and give you some sort of highlight or detail of what might happen. So it's, it's, this just forum, this podcast is educational as well in, in terms of what's happening in, in the current climate. But it's very important that you strategize. And if you guys are aware of, of releases and you're up to, up to date with what's happening in the in the community in the culture in, in sneaker just in general in, in terms of what the environment is you know when when the exclusive access was dropped in the states it sold out when exclusive access dropped in the uk eu it didn't sell out it stood around 
and there were still pairs after exclusive access was got was given. I know a couple of people that got kept getting exclusive access. They got two two exclusive access. Jenny, shout out to the sis. She got exclusive access a week ago, and then she got exclusive access last week. Um, so she got two times. She's two times she got exclusive access for that Cherry Eleven, and basically they couldn't give it away in the, in the UK EU, but they they're all selling out in the states. So you need to know what's happening in your environment, guys. You need to know what's happening. You need to stay in tune. What, monitor the situation. And if you know what's going to happen, you know, if you kind of strategize and look at the scenarios or the releases or how it's productively getting released, you realize that what's going to happen on release day is what's going to happen on release date. And this is why I started the podcast with it is what it is and it is what it is because it's always going to be that situation. It's for you to adapt to that situation, to maneuver in the right way to get the sneaker you want. And sometimes I know people don't like to put the effort in, but sometimes when it's a special release, you've got to put the effort in because that's what yeah. it's all about. And that's how memories are built. That's definitely how memories are built. Yeah, definitely. Definitely some people um, <clears throat> that missed out going to get a second chance, man. So you got to, like TJ is saying, like I was saying before, you got to pay attention. And if you, if you want to be lazy about it, you're just going to pay resale. It is what it is. Yo, sometimes, sometimes, uh, nothing, in, nothing in life is free. Let's just put it this way: nothing in life is free. You got to work hard. You put whatever you put in, whatever you sow, will actually flourish. So, if you put in nothing, you get dirt back. <laughs> That's simple as. And then, when you get the dirt back, you got to go to the shop and pay the extra price for the produce. That's the s- same situation with sneakers. Yeah. Think about it. If you yeah. start planting those plants, you planting those seeds, and you and you maneuver rightly, and you know when the sun's out, when the harvest is up you know when you get your sneakers. That, that yeah. is as simple as I can put it, guys. Know the market. Know your situation. You saw Dale this weekend. Yeah. What's up, bro? <laughs> you saw Dale this weekend. Yeah, of course I did, bro. <laughs> Shout out to the bro. Dale, what is up, bro? <laughs> Listen up, boys. I'm about to sing the new shoe song. <laughs> New shoes. <laughs> 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 what, what what did you get from Dale, TJ? Oh! <laughs> How could I forget? Finally! Do you want me to go and get it? <laughs> Please. Please. I'm going to turn Speaking around of, and I'm going to grab it from here, bro. Speaking of monitoring the situation... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I finally have my lost and bounce, bro. <laughs> shout, shout out to the bro. Shout out to Dale. Shout out to for that massive assist for the year, bro. This is then. This is what it's about. This is what it's about, guys. This is what it's about. When you help other people, when you help, when you help, when you help people, and you get that, you get that back. Oh, drop the box. When you help people, and you get that back. Um, it's amazing, but it's it's about it's about just hunting sneakers, guys. Uh, it's about like literally making sure that you kind of. I, I like. I'm I'm always happy when people get sneakers, or I'm happy to help um, people get sneakers because this is enjoy. I enjoy it as much as the person receiving it. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you finally got your pair. I know we've been, I've been waiting on this for what, three weeks now. Yeah, yeah, but but even more better is when I gave, I swapped. Um, I didn't obviously. I I paid all the extra cost on on the transfer, but um, I gave his daughter's pair because I picked it up um, from my account. And I gave it to him. He pulled it out and he was like, "A pity about the box because the GS boxes are just like normal, like mid boxes." But yeah. Bro, the, the crackled on 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 his daughter's pair was amazing, bro. Like it is just ridiculous. The GS pairs went in, bro. Like even even the toe, the back panels crackled, crazy, bro, crazy. Cool, man. I'm I'm just happy you finally got your pair, man. So we ain't got to talk about Chicago's <laughs> no more. You yeah. got your pair. Everybody else in the in the in the immediate crew, we all got pairs now. Um, he got his pair right. Yeah, his his pair is on route now. He probably be with him next week, which is or well, this week coming because it was shipped out. He wanted to get that before Christmas. I'm hoping fingers crossed he gets it. He gets it next week or this week, and then like we can, we can just not think about everybody who's just picked up the Chicago this year. This is phenomenal, bro. Um, yeah. It's definitely phenomenal, definitely phenomenal. Great, great. Okay, 
So quick, quick strike strikes. time. Okay, cool. I, I, I will start off the bandwagon. Let's just do this because let's go in. I want to talk uh, quickly about this. Bro, have you seen this? The eBay SP dunk lows. Bro, this is crazy. A 10 pairs have been loaded. Is it 10 pairs? I think it's 10 pairs have been loaded up on the eBay auction site. And this is the box that they're receiving. It starts at 10 grand when it when it got auctioned i think the first release that got auctioned the the, the um, actually the first pair that got auctioned on ebay was went for 30 grand i think if i if, if, if correct me if i'm wrong guys let's, i thought it went for 30 grand so it's all, t- all 10 of these are starting at 10 grand it's only gonna go up and up and up because this packaging is mental bro okay so the one thing the first thing that made me happy when I saw this is the fact that that you do get a normal pair of dunks also yeah, yeah, yeah. with the cut up with the clear that, Yeah, you, 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 only, you only get one. You only get one. Yeah? You only get one side. The other one, the other one's been cut up. I think if you see if you just, if you see the picture on our screen on the YouTube channel at the moment on, on our podcast, you can see the right and pairs are the eBay car pairs that they've done that's releasing to the general public. I think there's about 2,500 pairs coming out. Apparently, that's that's what stock numbers are. Um, the the left hand side, you see the top top sneaker is cut like the original um, the, the samples that got cut, and the bottom one is the full full release which has not been cut. So I think so now I'm disappointed again. Yeah, I think I think that's the way it comes. That's the that's the packaging. You get the you actually get the saw as well. I know, bro. I know, and it's, it's one box out of ten is what we're seeing. There's ten boxes, and uh, bro, like that. This is done by eBay, the door, uh, the Dolbecker Foundation, and and like SB, uh, bro, bro. I'm gonna go into the second half of this subject, but this is, I think, this is awesome. I, and the thing is, I think this is a collector's item rather than a wearer's yeah. item, definitely well, because I'm not it, putting that on feet, bro. And that is just a I beautiful am. package. If I if I had if I had the ten plus thousand or whatever um to get it i'm i gotta wear it bro yeah i just i just wanted a fully intact pair though i got excited when i saw that that left shoe was fully intact i didn't pay as much attention because i'm i'm looking at the saw i see the saw which is great with the ebay color uh stripes on it and i'm like i never liked the pair with the clear panels on it I just I don't like clear panels on on sneakers in general, for the most part. I the only the only shoe with clear panels that I actually liked was the women's uh, six from was it last year? Tech gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that was um, the only that was the only sneaker that had clear panels that I actually did, uh, dug like that. But now I'm I'm disappointed all over again. Because I think that shoe deserves to be intact. If they gave you two pairs, one intact and one with the clear cuts in it, I would have been great. But the fact that 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 right shoe is all it comes pre-cut, like why give me the saw? Let me cut it myself if that's what I want to do. But shout yeah. out to eBay, shout out to Dorn Becker, shout out to um, Nike SB. <laughs> Rest in peace, Sandy Bodecker. Rest in peace, yeah. And and shout out to everybody that has the capital to be able to put this in their collection, man. That box I've, is stupid. Yeah, I know. I I rate this release so highly. Um, of what what meaning and what basically the fact that it gives tribute to Sandy Bodecker as well. Um, that that that's phenomenal. That the fact that it kind of touches on the original release and the killer pack. I can understand you, you you can understand this sneaker so much, and you know, and to all the SB guys, that's got a lot of meaning to it. That's got a, a whole load of meaning to the sneaker. So shout shout for that. But also, we can't stop there, bro. We can't stop there because look at this. Sheesh, bro. Let me just say, like, eBay have opened up a uh, opening a store in Portland or Oregon. And basically, they're telling you, come into our store, come in, buy. I'm talking not average SBs, bro. I'm talking hype SBs for $65 and skate them out. 
I do that all day. Um, I, I will have to bring some knee pads, elbow pads, and a helmet <laughs> because uh, the last I, I actually got a skateboard. Bro, look, 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 look at the sneakers. You got, you got, you got. Look at the sneakers, Yo, bro. So, 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 right off top, right off top. That's that strawberry cough. Yeah, that's what I'm going in there for. I, the, uh, the a lot the and the Magnus, the Magnus and the strawberry cough uh, SB highs would be the main two things I'm going in for. But if you yeah. know SB history, you know every pair that they show, especially that yellow Grateful Dead. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the what the P-Rod, the Ray Gun, Bro, the Paradox. This, this, this is only one one third of the of the sneakers there. There's there's loads more. There's loads more. And your bro, go, like go first day. All this stuff yeah. is going first day. The people are gonna go look. This this is why. And to be honest, that whole eBay um, skate them out program was designed for tw- to celebrate twenty years of SBs to celebrate um, the Sandy Bodecker's foundation and his legacy and all of that stuff. And this is phenomenal, guys. eBay hit the nail on the head with this, bro. This is what it's about. You get your sneakers and you wear your sneakers and you use them for what they're supposed to be using, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, it, I I wish I lived in the Northwest US because I would definitely be taking that trip to to at least get a pair of strawberry coughs. That's that's probably my favorite SB ever yeah. outside of the um the skunk dunk. Yeah, that yeah, strawberry yeah. cough is ridiculous, bro. I, yeah. You know what? If I had to choose, if I had to choose between the Ben and Jerry and the strawberry cough, I would pick the strawberry <laughs> cough. The only shoe that I would probably pick above that strawberry cough would probably be the Red Lobster Dunk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. the Red Lobster. You. I mean, most lobsters are red, and I get it. Every 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 lobster dunk is colored after an actual breed of lo- a species of lobster, but that yeah. red lobster, because that's the lobster we used to see in most of the time. Once it's cooked, it's it's red. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that I, strawberry I cough, I ooh, I've seen it in hand uh, a few times. Crazy, bro. The material. The quality on that on that strawberry cough SB high. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Can't touch Okay, it. bro. Okay, bro. We're talking about lobsters. It's talking about lobsters. Whoa, concept tried again. And they uh, dropped the ball again. <laughs> Let's just say <laughs> that release was terrible second time round, bro. Listen, your opinion, man. because uh, your opinion, because basically we're gonna talk about it in sneaker court, bro. But yes. <laughs> no, I tried, I tried, um, and I, I, it was a reluctant try because I, I kind of figured even if I did get in line, the, the, the chances of getting that sneaker is slim to none because of how limited it is and how many people was going for it. Yeah. But concepts dropped the ball again. The raffle cyst, uh, whatever was it, raffle copter? Yeah, I I never heard of raffle copter. We've seen a lot of different raffle systems. Shopify seems to be um, like a, a general release app or or system. But as far as raffle systems go, they could have went with the Google system. They could have went with uh, a lot of other different that raffle copter didn't work bro for the majority of people that was going in maybe it was overcrowded maybe raffle copter ain't um probably ain't built to handle the type of volume that we got on on that re-raffle because concepts claimed they kicked out and canceled a lot of orders due to bot participation yeah yeah yeah. which is kind of it's backwards to me because when you do a Shopify release like they did, again, we, we talked about Ama Monier and James Whitner talking about how much money they had to spend on bot prevention. We talked about, you know, Nike with with the announcement they made pertaining to bot prevention because of how bad the Chicago uh, Lost and Found release went. 
Yep, 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 yep. But this this was this was an epic fail, bro. Epic <sighs> fail, bro. R- Raffle copter concepts. I don't know what y'all doing. I don't know what y'all thought was gonna happen. I tell y'all what. Y'all take this with you. <laughs> <laughs> take take this. Take this. Yep, this red card. You know what? I'm giving y'all a red card and a yellow card. <laughs> you might as well just throw the book at them, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, they don't, they don't need the book because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about this again. By the way, would you would you prefer band or no band? <sighs> I prefer the band. Yeah, I like I like I like the 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 strap around the actual toe box. The only thing about it is how durable is it? Yeah, because you, you know what S- you, SBs, are, knows. SBs are meant to be skated. Yeah, and if if you're not gonna skate, look, I like I like SB, I like dunks. I prefer SBs, but as we know, SBs are so so hard to get. Every SB yeah, yeah. that I like, orange orange labels are so hard to get, bro. Orange labels are so hard to get. Every SB that I like, I go for it, and I'm just not successful at all ever. <laughs> but um, I, I would like to do the band, but I I wouldn't want to because I wouldn't want to destroy it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm yeah. not a skater, so I would wear it casually. But and I would want to wear it a lot just because we know how durable SBs are. We see pro skaters and and amateur skaters destroy SBs, bro, and they last for so long, dog. Yeah, it's just yeah, the way yeah. they constructed the materials, the zoom air in there, like I just I just love it, bro. I Definitely, it. bro. And talking talking about lobsters, we just want to cover this. What do you think about the friends and family white lobster, bro? I don't like. The white lobster, but based on the fact that his friends and family, like what what can we really say about it? It's, yeah, the, the white the white lobster's always got that silver swoosh, uh, translucent blues uh, outsole. Um, it, it's ah yeah, I I, I feel with what you're saying. Uh, it's it's different. It's very different. It's cool, but I don't, nah, um. I wouldn't want if it if it was a GR. I wouldn't go for it. Oh, okay, cool, cool. cool. If I, I did, I, I, if I did go for it, I would want to use it for trade bait to get one of the other lobster colorways or another SB that I'm a yeah. fan of. Yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, would be, be it would be strictly trade bait, bro. I've, I've, um, to, to, um, my guilty, conf- no, not guilty confession. My confession is I do have two SBs in my, in my rotation. One of them is, um, the Concord SB, which which is pattern, pattern black with dope. a translucent out. So that's, that's dope. And the, the other one is the high Doraemon as well, which is all, like this all, all blue. And you're surprised. I didn't know you had those. I had those. I've got those. Um, I I like the color. I like the color scheme. Uh, I loved. I love the the whole um, anime vibe to it and that cartoony vibe to it. I love it. I I, I do. I do love that sneaker. I've not. I've got it. Um, I got it a couple of years ago, and um, I wouldn't around the house. I need to take it out for a good spin. I'm waiting for the sunny weather as well to take it out. We definitely could be coming out next year. I do appreciate SBs a lot. Um, and they're very comfortable. They're very, super they're very um, super, yeah, super comfortable, super, super skatable. skatable. Um, I don't, I don't have a tendency to pick up a lot of SBs because I, I leave it with the SB guys that want to wear it and and rock it and skate with it because uh, just out of respect as well. And, and like for me, if I can get like a, if I can get a Jordan One or Jordan Three or Jordan Four, which is more of a casual sneaker to wear out, um, I respect that. I'd rather pick that up than to take take an SB out of somebody's hands. So this is why when I got the Doraemon, I got it from the secondary market, which is a resale market, and it came uh, way after it released anyway. So um, I, I got it because I just love the colorway. It's just such a nice colorway. Yeah, it is dope, man. I mean, it's, it's not an official collab, but uh, they took yeah. inspiration from that character. It's super, super famous, popular character that I wasn't um, aware of until a little while before the release happened. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They did their thing with that one, man. Definitely, de- definitely dope, dope, dope. But 
It's um, kind of like Nick, a, almost like a high version of the Bart Simpson. SB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I kind of agree with you, but the thing is, it's all suede out as well, which is which is soft, so it's not leather. It's suede, um, yeah. and, and it's just such a nice sneaker, such a gorgeous sneaker. I I will find the opportunity to wear it. And talking about opportunities to wear it, I actually rocked the Doom Becker Sixes this weekend, bro. But we'll get onto that, bro. We can basically sheesh that sneaker is is hard, bro. That sneaker is hard. Yeah. But okay, next up is on Quick Strike is this one, bro. Um, Sh- Shannon Ablo basically reveals that they've still got a year's worth of off white releases, uh, to come. I mentioned this in the Shooter podcast. Um, no, I mentioned this in the Shooter podcast and the Sneaker News last week. They literally have got so many silhouettes that could they could release as a full run for, for a year's worth of releases. So I'm gonna, I think they're gonna span that out over the next five years. But obviously, if, you, if you're watching the video for the shooter podcast, you can see the off white breads for that Shannon Nabla was wearing the other the other week. Um, so yeah, that's just kind I'm of looking at those uh canary ones, <laughs> but, but of, of course, of course, this is uh the, the canary Jordan one, not the canary Air Force one. Yeah, yeah. But whoever put this article together chose this picture. Maybe the editor or or the probably the editor uh, more so than the writer chose this picture. This picture is not necessarily a reflection of what we are going to get, but there's so many sil- look, they got running silhouettes, uh Pegasus and and uh yep. I I think I see a pair if you look to the left of that Canary Jordan one that looks like a Nija SB. Yeah, yeah. If they do an off-white Nija, that would be so dope because now Nija's Nija's uh Nija Houston for y'all that don't know is he was a, a phenom as a kid. This this kid, he was like nine, ten years old or something like that, com- competing professionally. In, in skateboarding and he's continued his career. He is um uh, I think he's in his twenties right now. He um he has his own line. Dope silhouettes, dope colorway. That Laker Naja, was it the Naja 2? Uh collab with LeBron. Super, yeah. super dope. I, I missed out on that one. Um because I every time it, it restocked, I I couldn't get my size. I actually went for that one, but yeah. um, yeah, man, I'm 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 looking forward to seeing what they're gonna actually release because we see so much. Do you see over here to the top right that lime green? Oh, uh, look like a yeah. bolt green. It looks yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. What is that? Is that an Air Force? It looks like an Air Force One. It does look like an Air Force One. It does look like it does look like an Air Force One. It's it's in that Air Force way. It's in that in that line of Air Force Ones, to be honest. Yeah, but it's it's so many different silhouettes that they touch, man. Which which makes yeah. what Virgil was doing so dope because he wasn't afraid to go outside of the norm as far as silhouettes. And, and what you don't, what, what you guys don't see is this. This actual picture is is, is a picture when uh, when was this? 20? Before which is so. this this is pre COVID when there was a lineup of sneakers and everybody got hyped of of, of the all red all red Air Max Air Max nineties the the Canary yellow ones there was so many so, so many people looked at it bro people were hyping about the bread four um I when they saw this it was pre COVID picture when Virgil was still with us and this was the actual samples that we were seeing. Bro, they got they got loads of off whites coming. I yeah. I think there'll be loads of off whites coming soon, bro. And ho- hopefully everybody's paying attention to um what Shannon is is showing us and what she's saying because no names. Um, we we have seen fakes of of this uh off white bread for out oh, and about. Oh, bro, 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 bro. I remember so that. Look, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I, it, the people the people that you seeing with these unreleased off whites they're not real don't bro, believe the hype don't, I believe, remember, don't go for the cap I, I remember when these samples were shown and a couple of months after there's a couple of people rocking these off white fours 
and they were yeah. saying they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Yo, notable nobody's people. got those notable people. Nobody's wearing this. And this is before, before, way before we even started this podcast, years before we started this sort of podcast. This is why this podcast is now in fruition because situations like that, we, we talk about more and more. And this is where you can use it as a reference point. But bro, loads of people had this variation of the bread four on their feet, rocking it like it was legit. And now we're getting told, this is a friends and family and Shannon Ablo had them, all right? Where are you guys that was rocking the bread fours? Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. It's, it's I want to see them. I want to see them. I, I know, bro, I'm calling them out. Bring them out. I want to see them. Let's legit check them. Nope. It's not going to happen because they, they, they probably didn't fell apart already. Yeah, bro. You, 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 want, you want all the clout and I'm giving you all the clout. Bring them out. Look, as a as a as a person that has actually bought fake sneakers in the past, they don't last, bro. The yep. materials on them are so trash from the rubber to the leather to the the faux the faux suede. It is all faux. It, everything about a fake sneaker is faux. Yeah. They're not yep. gonna last, bro. And whoever we know, uh y'all might know, but whoever is buying those fake off-white fours, bruh, don't go for the hype, okay? Steer yeah. clear of these hype beasts that, that's bringing y'all these counterfeit sneakers and trying to make y'all believe that they real. They don't know what they're talking about. They're trying to create clout from thin air. It's not yeah, worth yeah. it, bro. Don't, yeah. don't, don't be one of those people that's trying to create clout from thin air, dog. It's, it's a bad but- but it's human nature because it is what it is, and it's always going to be what it is, bro. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is why I lined that statement up at the, at the start of this podcast because it's always going to be people like that. There's always going to be situations like that, and this is always going to be your choice to maneuver in and out of that situation, bro. Do um, you know? Do you do you know how crazy my collection would look if I decided? You know what? Just go for the clout. Bro, I have so, all type so, of I have all type of fake garbage in in my background right now. I don't do yo, that. Yo, bro, it ain't worth it. There's, there's there's this one YouTuber out there, and, and I do pay him respect. I can't remember his name. Sorry, guys, I can't remember anyway. his name. Um, yeah, but I do I do have respect for him because he picks up UAs, and he and he literally kind of dice like he doesn't dissect them, but he talks oh. about them. I know, you're yeah, yeah. About. yeah, you know, you do. Uh, sh- shout out to him. He, I respect him because if you if you want to rock it, and he's honest about it. I have respect for you because you're 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 doing your thing. You're doing your thing, and I have yeah, respect for yeah. that. But but like I remember when he brought out the Travis Scott Chicago's, oh uh, the John Travis Scott one Chicago's, the the mocha version with the red version with the reverse swoosh, and he was literally talking about how um, he doesn't care about UAs. If they if they release this um to you guys, you'll be all over it. Um, I love this. I don't care. I'm gonna rock this. And respect to him, bro. Respect to shout to the shout to him and respect to him. We but, ain't got bro, no Chicago Travis though. Yeah, we won't get them. We won't get them ever. We won't get them ever. Because if you if 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 we're if we're looking at what's been said in the media at this moment in time in terms of sneaker media, the olive low next year is the last release. For Travis Scott next year, like in terms of the Jordan One, I I I don't know if it's for the Jordan One low, or just the lows or the highs, but I think it might be just for the whole Jordan One range for Travis Scott because he, he's moving on to hopefully he's moving on to other things like the Jordan Seven. Um, we're going to see what, what that situation is in the future, definitely. I think but you need, I think you need to do a ten. I I think that yeah. would be interesting. Yeah, definitely. But also talking about the Travis Scott Jordan ones, Travis Scott Jordan one low phantoms, bro. We got told this week that this is the biggest release of the Jordan one for Travis Scott. I think I think the Olive pair might be a bigger release because it's the final hurrah for the Jordan one Travis Scott. Um, let's just see what happens with that. But what's what's your opinions on this uh, phantom, bro? I like them. I really, really like them. I like them more every time I see them. The, the the mixture of materials, the contrast stitching. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I, you know what? The contrast stitching. I don't is have. Enough. I don't have any all black ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that I I feel like that's part of the reason why I'm drawn to this sneaker. You know, you I know what? The contrast stitching. 
the the, the contrast stitching is a uh, very citrus vibe so, to to me personally. But like I like that. I uh, told told me told me, bro, you are definitely switching out those laces to red. No, really. I'm going all black, and they look like wax laces on all the images I'm seeing. If they yeah, wax yeah, laces, yeah. nah, I, I'm just gonna stay with the black, bro. I really, yeah, I really I, like, it, man. I can't front, that, and it ain't, it ain't no, it ain't no hype about it. This is a beater, like this, <laughs> this is a shoe that you can, you can do anything with it. You can wear anything with it. It's just easy, black and white. It, I mean, not not panda style, but you know the white stitching. Yeah. And guys, just just to, just to remind you, this is a bigger release than a normal Travis Scott, so it's, not, it's still it's still going to be limited. It's still going to be crazy, it's, but it's a bigger release. Um, the sneakers app, I think the sneakers app is getting a hundred thousand pairs alone, so it's it's kind of a bigger, big, big, big release, but not. It will be still hard to get, so don't worry. And as you can see on on the on the YouTube channel at this moment, so I'm showing you what North North America releases are and the European releases are. So make sure you put your raffles in for that. And like this is one sneaker you don't want to sit sleep on if you want to get it so make sure you got that but um going back to the going back to the story about the sbs bro um not the sbs the the off-white breads what what one would you prefer in in realism terms what one would you prefer the bread sb jordan 4 or the off-white bread jordan 4 Ooh. If you had to pick, if you had to pick one, and just one, knowing with the knowledge that the the off white is distressed, that the fact that is it looks what it looks because it's distressed, and knowing the fact that it, the Jordan Jordan Four Nike SB bread is going to be super comfortable because of the way SBs are going to be done. Well, that that SB is um, it's like a it's pretty much a black cat SB. Yeah. Um. And I got bread fours. I will, I will probably go for the SB. Yeah, because it's gonna be super comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Jordan fours are already they already got air in them, um, in the heel. I don't. I'm not sure if four. I don't think fours have a uh, four foot air. But I would. I would be more interested in the SB just f- for the comfort. Yeah. Yep. I I kind of I, I can kind of see it. I can definitely kind of see it. Cause the off white the off white four bread I would probably wear with the same thing I wear with my OG breads. Yeah. 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 So I I'll probably be more inclined to go for the SB. If I if if they were both in front of me, it would be a a pretty tough decision to make. Which one would I pick? But I I would probably go with the SB. That's a good choice. Uh, either way, it's a good choice. Um. I I think, uh, okay, 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 okay. I I wasn't gonna do this, um, but we'll, we'll do this. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do this. Um, you already said me answer the question. So loose shoes are dumped. This is one 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 version of the loose shoes are dumped we're gonna do this uh, this week. I have one I'm gonna set up. Um, and you will you won't see it coming. But um, loose shoes are dumped. Um, we're doing bread for OGs. Bread for SBs, bread for off whites. You can't let me answer the question. What are you losing? What are you choosing? What are you dumping, bro? I'm going to dump. I'm going to dump the off white. Oh, sheesh, bro. Because it's already friends and family. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to dump the off white. I'm gonna lose the OG because I already got a pair. Okay. I, I uh, okay. Ah, oh, damn! I should have said to you if you if you didn't have a pair, if you didn't have a pair. Nah, you're just too late. <laughs> 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 I just shot myself in the foot. In that one. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. I, I can see. I can see that. I can definitely see that. I'll give. I, I'll give you that one, bro. I'll give you that one. All right, cool. Next up for um for shock drops is um this. Let me just quickly bring it up. Actually, 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, let's just let's deal with this. Then. Let's deal with this quickly because I I want to get your opinion on the samples for the Bel Airs, bro. The 2014 samples of the Fresh Prince of Bel Airs, Jordan Five. What do you think, bro? And you know where Jordan Five guys. They should have gave us this instead of the alternate Bel Air. Oh, what a good shot, bro. What a good shot. I, I, I think you are right. I love this sneaker. I love the lime black midsole, the fusion pink and blue shark teeth. I love the fusion pink on the in, in, in the lining. I love the green job man on the black tongue. The black blue. 3M tongue, too. They should have gave us this, bro. I mean, that the, I, I bought the alternate Bel Air. I ended up getting rid of it because I wasn't gonna wear it. Um, <clears throat> the white, the white wasn't far enough away from the gray on the OG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should have gave us this. Whether it was blue leather or blue sweat, this looked like blue Nubuck. Yeah, it looks bro. like blue blue the Nubuck. Only, bro. The only thing is, it's not a uh, PE branded. Meaning it, it don't have the uh, the twenty three on the on the heel. Yep, yep, yep. But this this would have as because the alternate Bel Air was in the middle of the pandemic. All every gr was going crazy in the pandemic. These would have been a bigger problem as far as um, hype on a gr is concerned. And I had I had I think I bought three pairs of these. Two or two assists and and my one pair, as yeah. as difficult as it was, I I still managed to come up with with uh, three pairs, at least two. I know for a fact I can't remember, but I know. Shout out to Frog, I got Frog a pair, uh, ten and a half, and I got myself a pair. I I wouldn't have got rid of that. I would have kept that 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 blue, Bel Air would have still been in my collection to this, and it that- would have been on feet. A few times that's a, already. That that that's a, that's a super goat. That's instant. Yeah. super goat. Yeah, that, that that's an instant cop, bro. That this this would have been a legendary sneaker for 2020. I'm gonna say one thing about <laughs> Jordan Fives. Um, we there is a big. There seems like it's a big trend of Jordan Fives. It, like the push or they're trying to semi push some silhouettes to see if they catch the, the, the Khaled fives is, is an example, prime example of that. Uh, it, a lot, I think a lot of people are sleeping on the Khaled five, in my opinion, I think a lot of people will regret that in the future. And I feel, I think this is, they gave Jordan, they, or oh, Khaled did the five, but gave Jordan a chance to work out what the actual hype behind the five was. I don't think Jordan fives get really appreciated as, as a sneaker uh, in general, in terms of just the the, the attention it brings, a lot, a lot of people did divert or deviate from the five, but it's such a such a great sneaker, such an awesome sneaker. But it's good for us because it means we can pick them up, and it means you can just pick up the Jordan Five you want in terms of going to the shop and pick up picking up a Khalid. I saw a lot of people wear Khalid Fives this weekend as well, which is great. Um, it's not a summer sneaker. Yeah, me too. It's, it's, it, it, it's, it's not it's not a winter sneaker. It's a summer sneaker, guys. Um, but I do respect people that want to instantly put it on foot feet because there's always going to be people that want to instantly put sneakers on feet. The reason that this sneaker, the the sample version of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air Jordan Five, is the reason why I love the Crimson Fives. Is the reason why I love the Jade Horizon Fives. Is the reason why I love unique colorways. Because you're never gonna see a similar colorway to the Peach Crimson Bliss Jordan Five DJ Khaled. We the best, and you're never gonna see a a blue looking sneaker or a great five. Or any of those sneakers again, because this is like a once in a lifetime release. Um, it's gonna come out and it's gonna do numbers, it's gonna be amazing, and it's gonna go, and you won't see it for the next 20 years. And this is why I love the Crimson Bliss the way I do. I love also don't get me wrong, I do love the cell version of the DJ Cali Fives, but think about it. If it were if the Jordan 5 Fire Reds, the alternate Bel Airs, you got so many silhouettes. Or, or color blockings that are similar to the cell pair, but not as and not. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's not the cell pair, but 
you could if you didn't get a cell pair, you could go and get where a Jordan Jordan Five Five is, bro. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Or or, or even you can you can look, look at a K fifty four um fives. Yeah. See, there's there's so many ranges within that that kind of give it. I don't know, I don't know why people like the cell version because it's easier to wear. It, it's it's you can wear it a lot in a different places, and this is this is why it's more easier easier on the eye as well because people want to wear it, but. When you when you release a sneaker like the Crimson Bliss, all this sample, all this sample fresh fits of Bel Air, and you release it and it comes out like that, that's special, bro. That you ain't gonna see a Jordan Five like that in a little while. Yeah, I, I got um Fire Red, the K fifty four, the um alternate. What is it? Not the red. The racer blue is the but the alternate stealth. Yep, stealth two point oh, and um. The shattered backboard, the 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 blaze orange fives. Yep, yep. They're all white based. Exactly. White cell based sneakers. The only blue based five that I can remember is the blue suede five that you got. Yep, 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 yep. So I think this is necessary. Yep. They um, should have gave us this. And by the way, the, the colored pair isn't sale, it's bone. It's more of a bony colorway. Well so, the 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 blaze um the blaze orange uh shattered backboard fives is all sale upper. Yeah, yeah. So, so like 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 we're saying, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sneakers in that range that kind of are similar to the cell Khalid. It doesn't have that it doesn't have that lilac on the midsole, which is unique, which is so amazing. Um yeah. but but it's like from our comprehension, there's a lot of colorways that are similar to the cell pair. And this is why it was in the it's an easier rock because we're used to that colorway. But when you get like an all blue or a or a raging bull five or a um crimson bliss, there you or a great five, um, or also a great five, you you don't get those, you don't get those all the time. You don't get those all the time. So nah. when they come out, and this is why I love the Jade Horizon Five as well, such a great sneaker. That Jade yeah. on that. You enjoy it. who who's gonna see when you walk in walk in your high street or where you walk in down the road? And you see like a, like a different, unique colorway. You're instantly gonna be like, "Wow, they look good." Yeah, I mean, I've I've only worn my J's one time so far, and I got, I got a few compliments on those. But people, either people don't know or they slept on them. So um, colorways yeah. like this are necessary, bro. What the fives? What the five is a prime example of of how like it's so unique it's so different and it's such an attention like it's, it's a, such an attention grabber that you like well i have to wear it for a special occasion see what i'm saying yeah i still ain't wear mine yeah i started to wear them yesterday but i went with my um my griffey vapor max because i just wanted oh. to be comfortable because i knew i was going to do a lot of walking and standing yesterday yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh but yeah, yeah these these hard these are hard, bro. Like they should have. They, Nike, Jordan brand. Please just release them. Just release them. Hopefully. But 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 you know how it is, though. You know how it is. Um, there's no smoke without fire. So uh, we might see this in the next couple of years, maybe potentially. Hopefully, pray. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> hopefully. Next up on that hit list, bro, is Zion Williams. You want to uh, do a little quick track on Zion Williams? Yo, Zion. It's back. <laughs> now, when we both got these um, these Voodoo Zion 2s, I was hoping because of the way this shoe is constructed. And we know athleticism and, and you know, his skill level and all that. But when I put this shoe on and I thought about the way Zion plays, I said to myself, this shoe is going to be a small percentage of why Zion's return will be great. Yep, yep, yep. And true indeed, as I thought, Zion, he started the season a little slow, but um, as of right now, he's averaging 32 minutes, 25 points, <laughs> shooting 60%. From the Jeez. field, which if you don't, if y'all don't follow basketball, sixty percent is extraordinary. 
the last person outside of Zion to shoot such a high percentage was Shaq. And we know Shaq is pretty much the most dominant player in NBA history. Yeah. Zion is is on his way. Now, his three-point percentage is not good. He don't shoot many threes. Most of the time, he misses when he does, um, unlike his his rookie year where he was hitting a decent amount of threes. Yeah, but, but but that that could be that could be game focus. That could be uh, sharpening sharpening skills. Could be well, something you can't, to develop. You can't leave him now because yeah. people know what he's capable of at at the beginning of his career, and he's still early in his career. But in his rookie year, people didn't know really what to expect from him, so you kind of had to play it a little play him a little soft. People don't play him soft anymore. You can't give him space because his handle is great. His vision is great. And if you give him two steps, you can't stop him from that point. Really, really one step. He, because he's so he's so strong, he's so explosive. You can't give him one step because once he gets momentum, ain't nothing you can do about it. You can try, maybe you can try to go for a charge. Ain't that many people willing to let a three hundred pound guy run into him like that? No, nah, that's a st- that's a stream train. Though. That's a steam Yo, train. Bro. We're talking about professional athletes, bro. Like Zion no. at Zion at his lightest might be two seventy five, two eighty pounds. Bro, let me let me let me say let me kind of I heard something this week about Zion Williams. Is there a clause in his contract that says yeah. he can't exceed two hundred ninety five pounds? Yeah, he has a weight clause. Um, <laughs> But Sheesh. the good the good thing about it is he made his weight at the beginning of the season. And there's there's a thing about basketball players. The best way to condition yourself for basketball is by playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that he's playing consistently this season, um, knock on wood, he he has not had any injuries so far this season. Hopefully he won't have any injuries moving forward in his career. I mean, injuries are kind of inevitable in the NBA because a lot of contact, a lot of agility necessary, the way you turning and twisting in the air, people everywhere. And especially with his game, because his game is majority. Explosive. It's very explosive. Yeah, he's, he's at the basket before you know it. And as big as he is, he's super quick. He's cat quick. And he's always around the basket. He's finishing over guys that are five, six inches taller than him. But none of these people can do anything. With I really, I want to pull up. I want to. I want to play some clips. We go. I want to show you some clips. Um, you know what? A- you, we'll, after we'll, the we'll show, do, we'll do it after the show. But also, what we'll do is, uh, Shoe Dogs reacts. It's coming out this week. Uh, we're gonna do. We're yeah. gonna do the football. We're gonna do the football reactions. Right, and next week we'll do the basketball reactions. We we'll do yeah, that day, day after day after this podcast airs um, on YouTube. We go live, shoe dogs react. But I just I just wanted to mention Zion and get him some love. Seven twenty five points on sixty percent shooting, seven rebounds, four assists, a steal, almost a steal and a half, and pretty much one <laughs> block because people know not to go at the basket around him anymore. Yeah, yeah, because he will throw your shot into the upper deck. <laughs> so <laughs> I just I just had to give Zion some love, bro, because I wanted to, I wanted him to do well so bad. Zion yeah, yeah. is probably currently my favorite player in the NBA at this point. I'm gonna okay cool. We're talking about favorite players, I'm just doing the sidebar here, bro. Um name me two other players that you think potentially we the the public need to look out for this year if if they're basketball fans. Oh uh John Morant. John Morant, John Morant is the future of the NBA. He's a uh, John Morant is Allen Iverson and Vince Carter put together. Uh, but but in terms of uh, is is uh, you reckon Zion's still the future of the NBA as well? No, well when we when we talk the future of of the NBA, we can't just mention one person. We still we got Giannis leading the way. Um, we got Jason Tatum. Um, we got so. so we got so you give me, we, we got we got so from you at this moment in time you got Zion and John Morant and one and more person a Luca, Luca. All right cool but right, that's 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 good though because uh I've I've just set you up again bro <laughs> 
They all set me up. This is, this is easy for me. <laughs> all right, cool. Out of these three players, you, you're building the NBA team, right? Yeah, this is your NBA team. You have three, these three choices. You've got Ja Morant, Luca, and Zion Williams. Who you're choosing for your team, who you're losing, that means the opponents, your rivals will get them. Who you're dumping out of the NBA? I'm going to dump Luca. Okay. As great as a, I mean, Luca does it all. He, I mean, his, his volume, he's, he's a volume um, scorer and his usage rate, meaning how much he has the ball is through the roof, which is not necessarily good for team ball. Yeah. So for those reasons, uh, well, for, for, for the usage rate reason, I'm going to dump Luca. So now you got will, now you got Zion versus Ja Moran, bro. I will probably lose Ja because I love <laughs> I love Zion's game. Now Ja Moran's game is undeniable. All, all three of their, their games are undeniable. Um, I, I dump Luca because of his usage rate. Z- ja Moran is. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna choose Zion, bro. Because just, yeah, just because yeah. I, I like Zion more than I like Ja. I can't I can't give you any reasons why I wouldn't choose Ja Morant. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. I, I, you know what? It's phenomenal to see because basically we're used to seeing Kyrie, we're used to seeing Westbrook, we're used to seeing LeBron, we're used to seeing um, James James Harden. Harden. Yeah, yeah, like the, these guys are coming. Um, I would say some Kevin of them are Durant. coming to the end. Of, Kevin Durant, these some of these guys are coming to the end of their career. Some of these guys are going to retire in the next five years. Um, mm-hmm. But we're seeing so much new talent come through, and it's, it's like amazing to see that because like yeah. you do all the people, all the people you just mentioned, uh, you you bro, we haven't mentioned Trey either. Well, Trey is my guy. Like Trey is my default guy because <laughs> you know I'm a Hawks fan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't have to talk about Trey. I don't have to talk about Dejounte Murray. Um, John Collins, uh, 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 Bogdanovich, like my whole squad. I'm riding with my whole squad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm excited. I'm. But to be honest, that this is this is probably going to lead me into watching a bit more, more NBA. To be honest, like I'm, I'm getting into the flow of it, which is which is a bit difficult if you live in the UK because obviously everything's like, you know, yeah, the time differences and the, the yeah. broadcast um, inability to broadcast in certain places, but. Every every team has somebody to watch, which is 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 pretty much always the case. Yeah, and um, the future is looking brighter. We got um, guys like Paulo Bancaro, Jalen Green. Um, uh, who am I thinking about? Um, God, De'Aaron Fox. Like every team, even the bad teams, have players. That's that'll that'll drop your jaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, yeah. even with Zion being on the Pelicans, you know they got CJ McCollum who is their vet, but then they got um, Murphy who is is just as exciting as Zion. You know, as as far as uh, making big plays, um, Alvarado, like he, they call him Grand, they call him GTA Grand Theft Alvarado. <laughs> because this the stuff the stuff that he does, bro. He got this thing where he lurks around the inbound, and you think you' about to get the inbound pass. Next thing you know, he got it because he's only <laughs> like he's only like six feet tall. Yeah, so he steals, can hide he's behind the steals, players yeah. and come out of nowhere and get the steal. Like, it's, bro, the NBA is in good hands as, as far as the future with oh, these players, bro. And plus, good. we got. Victor Wembanyama coming in next year, Bruh, It's it's gonna be problems. Bo Bo uh, for Orlando over there with um, Paulo Banquero. Bo Bo is seeing Victor Wembanyama coming over the horizon, and Bo Bo has turned into a different guy, bro. Like this, the stuff that Bo is doing, you can look at Wembanyama and say. Yeah, they looking at each other. And when 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 but I'm looking forward to seeing Bobo versus Vic next year. That's gonna be a, those are gonna be great games. Well, whatever team um 
Shea Gildas Alexander. I can go on and on, bro. Josh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There with, with, with Shea Gildas. And on on the, on that note, guys, start looking. I'm gonna start looking at some NBA um, matches or, or or some actual games. So, guys, I advise you if you want to know some of the stuff that's going to be happening. And you know what? We talk about the NBA because it kind of actually really influences a lot of uh, the sneaker game as well. It does massively. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Speaking speaking of NBA and sneakers, your boy Kyrie. And Nike have officially parted ways. Yeah, yeah. We saw this coming. Um, Phil Knight spoke out uh, during the interview. He was asked about Kyrie, and he pretty much said, "You know, they don't they don't want to be associated with him, for lack of better uh, words." Yeah, I, Kyrie I, we, we, has been trolling. trolling yeah, yeah. massively trolling. Massively trolling. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. I thought I assumed the pictures would be in this article, but he he is still wearing his uh, signature sneakers. Yep, yep. And he's written "I'm free." Yeah. On, <laughs> on logo, the side. Logo here. Lo- logo here. Almost, yeah, logo almost, here. Almost like almost like an off white, um, off white uh, tribute. <laughs> yeah. Logo here, air here, foam here, bro. Yeah, that, that, that I seen that. I I heard he's partnering up with a. As with a company, I think it's a black-owned uh, sneaker company. Maybe potentially, I don't know. That's that that might be on the horizon. Um, but yeah, Kyrie, Kyrie's trolling, bro. Kyrie's trolling. He's still dropping the points. He's very, he's very much trolling. Yeah, he he don't care. Um, and listen, Kyrie, Kyrie <laughs> is entitled to do whatever he wants to do at this point. <laughs> That's the picture we're talking about. Yeah, Th- Kyrie, thank, Kyrie thank, can. Thank- the f- the thing is, uh, enlarge that picture because, like, I'm just talking. The fact that he said, "Thank you, God, I am." Yeah, I mean, that, that, he that literally is like, "I'm so relieved that I've left Nike." Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's a little bit of a troll and a little bit of uh, sarcasm because yeah. he he stands to lose a lot. But but when you listen to Kyrie Irving talk, money ain't everything for him he's yeah, had yeah. he's had huge nba contracts um and he often speaks on just being happy in his off the court space. life yeah person space exactly yeah um so. what what do you think Kyrie's next move is like in terms of just where he where do you think he's headed i don't know bro i mean he uh i'm i don't think he has as many options as he could because of the reason why he's not with Nike anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I think it was it was already going to happen uh, based on the controversy about his about the last shoe that they released. He didn't like the shoe. He didn't approve the oh, design he, and all that. Yeah, that was that was during COVID. He came out and said, "I, I this this sneaker is trash." This yeah, it was supposed trash. to be the Kyrie Eight. They ended up renaming it to uh, was Kyrie Infinity. Which is yeah, yeah. super ironic because <laughs> he, uh, clearly his, his relationship with Nike ain't infinite. But um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully he can he can uh, patch it up with Nike at a later date and uh, get retros because they they're still selling pretty well. And I think um, yeah, people, it's, it's a, one of the most ahead. popular. One, it's one of the most popular uh, silhouettes, Kyrie silhouettes. And, and I was talking to, to shout to uh, Cooks um, from Trainer Heads. Um, he's one of the people I met during SneakerCon this weekend. Um, he was mentioning that Ky- like, ba- like balling in Kyrie's is so comfortable. He's one of the best yeah. balling sneakers. Uh, and it also kind of reminds me of Kobe's as well, because Kobe's is, is in a similar light. Well, that's that's the inspiration. Um, and, Kobe, and then there's always... Kobe had the yeah, best the, Nike basketball shoe. If you look at the LeBron 20, it's heavily influenced by uh, Kobe's. Yeah, like Kobe yeah. I, seven, eight, Kobe fours and fives. I can see I can see that because also like when they, this is why we've had the Bruce Lee um, like yeah, Kyrie did a Kyrie, Bruce Lee. Yeah, because Kobe did a Bruce Lee um, and then yeah. it basically kind of... Kyrie did, kind a, of, he did a Ray Gun also. Yeah. So it kind of like pays tribute to the Kobe's as well, and it's a very similar. It's a very similar sneaker, so it's very comfortable. I, I do. We, I don't think we're gonna get we're gonna get a lot more Kyrie's in the future. Well, Nike, Nike is is they still in possession of um, a lot of silhouettes and colorways from Kyrie, so 
they dropping. I've seen notifications um, recently of a lot of Kyrie's going on sale. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah. People snapping them up, bro, because ain't going to be no more. So if you're a hooper and you like Kyrie's, it's best that you get as many pairs as you can get right now because... Yeah, because it's going to be difficult to get. Difficult to get. Yeah, and, and um, they won't... Because Nike still has the rights to produce them, yeah, they'll they they probably will, or maybe they'll they'll move forward with silhouettes that they wanted for him. Maybe they'll give them to Ja Morant they, because they, we know they, Ja Ja is coming. His his signature sneaker is coming. Devin Booker's signature sneakers are coming as well. So um, I think Ja Morant and Devin Booker will probably take over that space where Kyrie yeah, leaves they'll, the board. they'll benefit from that. They definitely benefit from that. I don't I I think in that situation Nike's got nothing to lose. Like they they've literally got got all the patterns. They all got the intellectual property. They literally will say, all right, cool, all right, Kyrie, see you by you at the end of your career anyway. So or in in their regards. Not not so, in terms of I think Kyrie's still got another couple of years or even five years left in him. Um, but the thing is, from from Nike's perspective, cut their losses and give give some of those silhouettes to other athletes. And I think what you just said is spot on. Yeah, if if but if Kyrie wants to stay, um, if he wants to stay as relevant as because he his skill has not diminished. Yeah, uh, his off the court antics have uh, hurt him, and he's on his last year under contract with Brooklyn. So he he kind of bet on himself. By taking the one year deal, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see what happens in the off season. Who, if whether uh, Brooklyn resigns him or some other team is inter- teams will always be interested in him as far as um, his play on the court it's is still, concerned. He's very t- He's probably one of the best ball handlers out there, bro. No, he t- Kyrie Irving is a top three ball handler, and he he probably ain't three. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, yeah. when you talk about ball handling, you talk about Kyrie Irving, you talk about Allen Iverson, you talk about Isaiah Thomas, uh, Rod Strickland. It's only a few names throughout NBA history that you that you put at that top tier of ball handling. Tim Hardaway. So um, Kyrie is definitely up there. I I, yeah. I I give him top two. Um, but he he could easily be one. Yeah, yeah, he, he, bro, th- th- his skills are legendary, and this is why we see a lot of um, w- a lot of those uh, Uncle Drew kind of um, before Uncle Drew actually came out, we see the Uncle Drew kind of um, ma- like gimmicks where he goes out on court dresses like an old guy, and yeah, this is Uncle well, Drew, and he balls he got, and he, he kind got of kills the name it. Uncle Drew from killing the Drew League every year. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, if, if for for those that don't know, right, uh, quickly before we get off this. Kyrie Irving honed his skills, his his ball handling skills, from dribbling a basketball with a plastic bag on it. Sheesh. Um, and now we know how difficult dribbling is already. Imagine dribbling with a plastic bag wrapped around the ball. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. I did not know that. I that's didn't why. Know that. That's why. That's why it's Sheesh. hard to get. It's hard to get the ball away from Kyrie because. He, his his handling is one hundred. Yeah, that that's a, that's a fact one on one for you guys. Damn, I did not know that. That's crazy, bro. And that yeah. and sometimes you have to go above and beyond to and to modify your skills. That that's what we call it. Think about skills. this. He only played like nine games in college, got hurt, and still got drafted number one overall. Sheesh. Yeah, that's that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's that's ridiculous, bro. The guy, yeah, the, I whatever you want to say about Kyrie, um, obviously everybody's surrounded by controversy. Sometimes, the way you, I look at it is sometimes controversy outweighs the talent, and sometimes you got to sit back. Unless the controversy is that bad, I'm not going to mention names. You still got to love the content. They they and the and the skills that they give you, then to just kind of just let the controversy overshadow you. Sometimes, sometimes what they've done in the past, in terms of their skill level, and what they become as a controversial figure, you need to kind of sometimes separate that because you 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 have to love the talent, but you, even though you don't love the person, 
Yeah, and and the support, the level of support that Kyrie has, um, even though I I know I was critical of um, of Kyrie because my thoughts on the whole thing was he should understand more of the world that he's in with the amount of influence that he has and the companies that he has uh, attachments with. I think he should have understood that more. But as far as the backlash is concerned, I think it's a little unfair that he was the only one to receive backlash. LeBron spoke on the fact that Jerry Jones didn't get no backlash for, for that, that picture of him um, being in that crowd when, when uh, schools were being desegregated, Jerry Jones was there. The media don't talk about that. The Brett Favre controversy with him stealing all the millions of dollars um, from, from welfare. We don't talk about that. Amazon, Am- the, the 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 post that Kyrie made or the, the that Kyrie shared was from Amazon. Kyrie gets backlash for posting it. Amazon don't get backlash from selling it. Yeah. So it's it's tough when you're the guy with all the clout, with all the influence, and these other people and entities don't get the same amount of backlash for arguably more controversial things. Yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mention or say just my point on that. Life is not fair, and it's for us to make it fairer. So if if you see some injustice, do speak up about it. it it's good to speak up about it and and let people know what the injustice is. Life life is never gonna be fair. You you might you might be you might have grow up with a silver spoon in your mouth, or you might be have um, all the world stacked against you. Life is never gonna be fair. It's how you deal with the consequences of your situation that matter the most. And that's all I say. And yeah, how Kyrie, how you deal with it. Kyrie gonna be straight, man. He yeah, yeah. Exactly, bro. Exactly. He's got a lot of support, so that 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 is um, that is great to see. But I want to. I'm going to see what he's going to do in the next couple of years in terms of his sneaker brand. If he's going to still rock those, um, if he start, if he start, um, unpeeling the swooshes on on his shoes and rocking. <laughs> he might. He might go to Lee Ning, man. Lee Ning been been giving out that bag, and I mean, if you look at what Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade has made a lot more money with Lee Ning than he made with Jordan Brand, so. Yeah, that, that might be a good option for Kyrie as well. Um, exactly. We gotta talk about this, bro. Yeah. By the way, we we we're talking about the main subjects now because we've gone done our quick strikes. We are uh, Kyrie was the, uh, one of our main subjects this week. The next one is I got this Mark wrong Kyrie. on my sneaking. Yeah, I got this wrong on my sneaking news. I called it Gnar. I, I I said the G. How, you know what, bro? I'm English. I'm I'm from UK. I I say it like it is, but it, because that that slang is more of a US slang. Let's just be honest. Yeah, the 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 G is silent. Uh, little Nar, little Nar, little Nar from uh, narcotics. Uh, okay, cool, cool. Let let's let's do it. Let's do it this way. Sorry, bro, to cut you. Let's do it this way. I say Nike, you say Nike. I say Gnar, you say Nar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and, and it, it, if if we if we only said narcotics, it would be spelled wrong because because yeah. people wouldn't put the G on it. But yeah. narcotics is the brand. Lil Nar is the person who has got the attention of Nike behind the Cool Kai situation <laughs> and the Ami situation, the John Geiger situation, the uh, Warren Lotus situation. Yeah, Lonar is next. Yeah, the, you know what? The, he pro- he probably the sat swoosh, there. It's a butterfly. He, yeah, yeah. He probably sat there last week and thinking. <laughs> 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 he had to know it was coming. <laughs> we know he's coming, bro. We know he's coming. I, I think right this moment in time. I think the, the agenda on Nike's uh, whole situation on on the on the sneaker front is stop bots, stop fakes, stop not fakes, stop unauthorized use of our patents. Yeah, and uh, this guy he's done uh, a lot of dunks. Um, if you're watching, we you you can see the picture of him and uh, also the sneakers here. Yeah, I I I personally was unaware of his brand 
Yo, like 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 people say, n- n- no news is bad news. Any bad news is good news. Any publicity, no bad publicity is is bad for you because nobody knew about narcotics, the brand narcotics before, like be, like before it was Nike's lawsuit. And now everybody's gonna be looking at looking at the like. Okay, now I know the butterfly is narcotic. Yeah, I didn't know. And you know what? Just like the it's, sun. I'm wondering now if um the Air Force Ones with the butterflies on them were his. Yeah, that that because there's a lot of people that a lot of people were doing that um Air Force One with the butterflies at the back, but there was there was it wasn't to the swoosh, it was to the back panel where they had a butterfly. So maybe not, maybe not, potentially. Yeah, I don't but know. He, bro. He, but he could have used that. But the thing is, it could be a double. It could be a double knockoff. It could be a double of whammy because somebody that did the butterflies narcotics has come along and said, "I like that butterfly. I'm going to stick on the swoosh." But see, his is kind of a mashup of a Dunk and a Jordan One. If we yeah. look at the lines, um, especially on that that back uh, heel panel, the line is drastically different from the original. Uh, Nike dunks, yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. You the can toe see box, that. the toe box compared to a dunk is more it's longer, like, uh, longer, longer. Yeah, it's it's more like a Jordan one, and also the sole is more like a Jordan one sole than a dunk sole. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, but we know Nike also, also that um, the I stay the I stay panel is is a little different, but the colorways yep. uh, and and the uh, the full swoosh. I think is probably the main things uh, other than that outsole because that, Yo, that looks like a Jordan one outsole. Bro, I'm going to say, I'm going to say not knock little knock is basically be watching too much Dragon Ball Z. Well, he, you know, anime is you, big you know, for young people. You know what, you, you know why, you know why I say that? You know, you have you, have you watch Dragon Ball Z at all, bro? Yeah. Hell yeah. Did you, did you, did you watch uh, the Dragon Ball, like uh, the fusion? When yeah. it, when it, when yeah, this is this is yeah. the Jordan one. This is the, he, 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 he literally got <laughs> look, look, bro, bro, bro. Look, think of this way: he got the Jordan one here, he's got the dunk here, and he's going fusion, boom. That's he got. You got the narcotic. There you go, bro. And he just literally said, "I like that butterfly. I'm gonna put that butterfly." Bro, literally, what 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 we're seeing the narcotic knockoff. What what Nike's calling a knockoff, right? Is literally a Jordan one SB dunk low fusion. It literally is a Jordan One Fusion uh, to a dunk. That, that's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, not not Lance with, with a little bit with, with a little bit of modification. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a Lance Mohill. <laughs> <laughs> no Lance Mountain and Lance Mohill, bro. <laughs> yeah, this this is this is little this is little nar narcotics Lance Mohill right here. <laughs> I I don't like it, bro. I, I mean, I got I got the. Uh, the shatter backboard Jordan low, not the OG. And this is what it it reminds me of. The, the color with they showing this this dunk, but I think it's more like a one. It has more Jordan one low features than it does yeah, um, yeah. dunk features to me. And we know Jordan one lows and dunks are pretty similar anyway. But yeah, um yeah, yeah. yeah this this is just another. It's just something else for Nike lawyers to do. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be interested to see what happens with this situation. Um, I, I, the fact the fact that we got Cool Kai, um, and we got who's the other who's the other guy that we um, kind of uh, army. Um, it's just really funny that we totally forgot. So sorry, 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 bro. But like, well, army um, army is not as popular as um yeah as Cool so, Kai, so, and also um Sia or Saya, however you say his sorry. name, um. He, I think he he probably got one coming. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely. I, I think I think next couple of weeks you're gonna see Warren Lotus back on 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 that kind of. Um, or, or was that was that lawsuit settled already? The Warren Lotus lawsuit. Yeah, Lo, Warren Lotus is uh, is over. Uh, John Geiger yeah. is over. So the Nike lawyers got time and and space to. All the actually, other ones. Um, yeah, yeah, and and Lil Lil Nar is. Uh, a rapper. Yep. I know. I've never heard any of his music. But um as we can see, he been he been selling he been, <laughs> been selling busy. these 
He been selling these Lance Mole Hills <laughs> with, with the butterfly. Um, this 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 ain't elephant print, but it's pretty close. And he got colorways. Yeah. That resemble um these resemble um <coughs> the, the the Atmos dunks. Yep, yep, yep. Um so yeah, I ain't no I don't see a way he can really avoid this lawsuit. I mean, just like like mischief, just like you know, everybody else that, that got action from the Nike lawyers. Yo, bro, Nike like Nike's giving out lawsuits left, right, and censor. You like literally like here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. I see you in court. <laughs> yeah, literally, bro, it's crazy, it's crazy. But the, to be honest, for all the people that are, the, all the people that they're gonna come after, I feel sorry for. But um, I want to say, bro, like literally, it is what it is because Nike's protecting their property. It's it's literally like you're squatting on their on their land. And now they got their double barrel shotgun and they walk in the yard. So anybody's getting those shots, bro. Everybody's getting those shots. So at the end of the day, you put yourself in that situation, consequences are going to happen. Every reaction yeah. get a rea- every action gets a reaction. So in retrospect to where you where you stand on this. This is Nike's property, and you feel that you're biting, and um, you, they, you, uh, uh, you, taxes are coming around the corner for you guys. Yeah, I think um, in certain cases, it's is probably well. Obviously, it's the easiest to just comply. Yeah, but 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 now the situation. Now I'm going to put a little flip on it, bro, because I love to do a little flip. Do you think? If Nike turned around and said to these these um, guys, inspirational guys that do their stuff and copy and, and trying to use the model and the pattern, they said to these guys, all right, cool, I'll tell you what, guys, I'll give you, I'll, I'll let you have, use the pattern with your range of sneakers that you do at this moment in time if you give us 20% of the markdown. Not, let's just say, not the markdown. We'll give you Royalties. 20% of the royalties, 20% royalties for using that pattern. Do you think they'll snap it up in a heartbeat? It depends on it depends on the value. Um, I think that's 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 a good. So, are you talking about the creators getting twenty percent or Nike getting twenty percent? The, the no, the, the Nike getting twenty percent. So Nike's like, all right, cool. You see, see your, that. you see your, see your production line. Or even even if it was up to fifty percent, so you see your production line. All right, cool. We like it. We see. We like what you've done. We enjoy your. You enjoy your. You're part of the community. You're part. You love Nike. You. This is an inspiration because I'm talking cool guys kind of vibe here, right? We love yeah. the inspiration. We love the fact that you're you. We inspired you to do something magical, even though you use the pattern from us because obviously that that situation we don't like because that's something that you we didn't want you to do, but you used it. You created this marvelous brand you create this community we don't want trouble with the community because we want you to grow we want you to excel but now what we're trying to do is to use that pattern we're going to charge you an x amount of percentage on your profits not the not the bottom line not the production take all of that out well at the at the end of the day this is how much profit you're getting we want x amount of profit from it because you we that's the royalties that you give us like any other any other company or any other music company would do is pay all the royalties to the person that's actually manufactured it or or, or actually produced it here you We're go talking samples yep which which pretty much it is um if it was me i would take that 20 30% i would take that and i i would take that and i would ramp up <laughs> My advertising and my production. To, because to, now, but now, because now you officially be backed by Nike. Yeah, you be backed green by Nike. You got the green light. You know, you're, you you're not on that red I tell light. you what, produce my products in y'all factories, and I get y'all fifty percent. Bro, no, bro, Nike. We just giving you an idea, bro. You can, you, you can literally sub brand your patterns. You yeah. literally can do that and say, okay, cool. I know you're not supposed to do this. Slap on the wrist, but we take we take an X percentage. Um, you keep your production. That's supplementary income that wasn't there ever before. 
You know what? Buy me out. It makes it makes your bro. You they could because Jordan range. You got another range. You got another range, and you got another range. But the thing is, you want to keep the creator of that range because you know what? You know what makes Cool Kai so special? And I've, I've seen, I've, I, I was looking through his page the other day. You know what makes him so special? They want to do different things with the same model, so it's different and unique, but it's still on the model you know and 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 kind of reflect on because it's like still Jordan One, but it's got pan, it's got different colors, it's got different vibes, and you're um, it's so different and so like I would love to get that. But also, it's not. It's still similarities and familiarities with the original brand, and this is what makes it so special. This is why a lot of people gravitate towards it. If I was, if I was Nike, bro, uh, and that's a homage to your silhouette for one, for Jordan brand and Nike. But secondly, supplementary income royalties. There you go. Use 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 the pattern. Do what you need to do. Keep the keep the inspiration going with what you're doing. Don't make them just like what we do. Put your flair on it, yeah, and man. and his and do it, Ty, and bro. Ty you know you, exactly. You know how amazing that would be. It, it, like instead of t- like taking these guys to court and t- and uh, you, you got to take them to court because they made so much money off your back from from your pattern anyway, right? And mm-hmm. you need to refund that back. But this is. Uh, for for cre- for the creators or like Cool Kai, for Nah Little Nah, for any of the others, Warren Lotus, bro, this so like, we don't know about Little Nah at the moment. We're we're talking about Warren Lotus and Cool Kai. They're so reputable. They've made a household name by just getting Nike to do a lawsuit. That's that's a massive missed opportunity for Nike. I know Nike is trying to cut down on people using their patterns because patterns are their property. But like anything, you can lease your property for a percentage. It makes financial sense, bro. Why nobody's actually thought about doing this until we've just said it. Guys, we're the first ones to actually come out with this idea, bro. It's crazy. Yo, and and I think... uh... On 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 the, just, opposite, on the opposite so side of that, Nike Nike got billions, and they going they gonna continue to to get billions. So cool, it's not course, it's not really it's not really um a big deal to them. Yeah, getting, yeah, getting but the, but that extra little but, bit from from these creators. Yeah, yeah, but I I understand that it's not about money. It's not it's not about money. It's not about money here. It it's it's about your reputation, bro. It's about not yeah. reputation. It's about you giving back to the community, bro. Because the community love you so much, buy your product so much, love you to an extent that they want to copy your models. That's a tribute. Like however much you want to say, oh, this is copying, this is copy paste, blah blah this, blah blah that. These guys love your product so much, they're profiteering off your model. And they want to do something special with it. It makes it makes so much it makes so much sense. I I, I people are gonna be, obviously there's gonna be people in the chat and and the comments that are saying oh yeah they're still fakes they're still U, UAs they're still this they're still that. But like if if Nike just gave out the percentage and said all right cool we're gonna charge you this much percentage to lease out the pattern you can do what you need to do we want you we want you in house like the shoe surgeon potentially it could be another avenue or market for um, revolutionizing um, the business model that we call the brands that lease their products out to other people to to manufacture we see we see Balenciaga do it all the time we see other other high end high end fashion guys do it all the time now these these small Isolated creators that create uh, that actually established their name in the sneaker game uh, from the streets upwards. If you give these guys a chance to lease your pattern for a percentage to keep, and they will up their production, and they will start revolutionising their product. But they're in house with Nike now because Nike's taking them in with that lease. Bro, that's a that's a total different market that we 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 potentially could have revolutionised. In terms of what we're speaking with, of how Nike approach all of these, all of the UA, uh, or not the UA, all of these um, independent marketers of of their silhouette. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I mean, we'll see, bro. I 
I don't think um I don't think there's anybody that's that forward thinking that has anything to do with these lawsuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're gonna bro. let they're gonna Lo- let legal lawyers, things, yeah, they're gonna yeah, let lawyers gonna be lawyers. Lawyers gonna be lawing. Um, I don't, I don't know. So that's not a word. <laughs> that, that's not a word. So that's not a word. But I made it up. Don't worry. Uh, lawyers gonna be lawyers, lawing. Lawyers gonna lawing. Lawyers gonna be lawing. Um, that's my that's my new favorite word. I made it up. The dictionary will come out with it in the next ten years. Lawyers will be lawing. Um, and <laughs> they, they'll be going to court. They'll be doing their thing because basically, at the end of the day, that they they. they designed to actually follow the laws, rules and regulations for what they are actually been hired for. And that's, I, 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 unfortunately, that is the situation. But somebody within Nike needs to wake up and think this is an opportunity. This is a massive opportunity for Nike and the community. And yeah. to rather than deconstruct a name, give them the chance to construct something magical with you and that in itself if it like hands on if nike said all right cool okay cool kai warren lotus we love what you're doing come in house and keep your keep keep your ideas keep your designs keep pushing it come in house bro in an instant they'll be like okay cool let's do it i think that that will have to be a conversation that's had prior to a lawsuit yep um we we don't know if uh, we hadn't heard that these conversations are taking place, but I think once the lawsuit is is filed, those conversations are less likely to be had. But it would be a great thing if those conversations were brought to the table because I think yep. the majority of creators would agree with that. Yep. But I, I, I think John Geiger would like nothing more than to have uh John Geiger X Nike Air Force One collab. Bro, you, you know, you know, um copying is is basically um it's flat. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's 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 flat it's it's basically saying we love you so much, it's flattering to the, the to the brand. But like this is this is this is why I think we just revolutionized the whole conversation with this bro. If you really think about it. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean it's it, <sighs> I hadn't heard anybody say anything like that, but um, that that would be a good thing for, I think for both sides, because what you spoke to um, a minute ago, it would, it would increase Nike's reputation. Oh no, bro. It will, it will enhance it massively from what Nike is now. And we, everybody loves, everybody aspires to wear Jordan and Nike. Like, let's just be honest. A lot of people that are coming through the sneaker game love. Like, when I was younger in the 90s, I was aspiring to wear Nikes, bro. Like, that, that is, that's always going to be inbred with, with, with me and you. Because yeah. Nike was the brand. Nike was the brand, bro, in, 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 in our childhoods. So from that perspective, when you, when instantly you, you remove the whole attack format, and you say, mm-hmm. okay, cool, we respect, we give you the respect format. And because we respect you for what you're doing, because it's hard work. What Warren Lotus and what Cool Kai have done is hard work to get to where you are, to build a platform from nothing to where you are. And we're talking about guys, like hundreds of thousands of millions of people that follow the Warren Lotus, Cool Kai, and all that stuff, right? From that perspective, bro, like, Nike could do something special here like 100 percent. nike could do um, some some really special things here and this is why i love talking to you bro because on the spot we come up with radical things like this yeah no, that, that's crazy. a great that's a great idea bro um hopefully moving i don't think at this point anybody at nike that has to do with the lawsuit once again I, I don't believe that everybody in the company is so naive or so um, so hard ass to say, nah, just shut it down. Somebody in there is like, bro, why can't we, why can't we collab with Cool Kai? Why can't we collab with what? Now, I think Cool Kai is the prime example because he's he's going outside of the box and he's coming up with colorways and concepts that work every 
single time. If not yeah, yeah. every time, 95% of the time, the concepts that Kai is coming up with are original and they work. Of course, he, I mean, he's got a shadow. He's got a royal toe. He's got a, a Chicago, you know, but most of the stuff that he's doing, we haven't seen with Jordan 1s. But for I, the other guys, I, like a Warren Lotus, he's he's replicating color. He replicated the Heineken. He's replicating... You know, uh, uh, and that, 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 that's a bit that's a bit different. But what 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 I'm what I'm trying to say, even even Warren Lotus with the whole swoosh that that Freddie face swoosh, yeah, I like that. Basically. And you know what? It's so at this moment in time, it's so iconic. And that's the that's the ridiculous thing about it: the thunderbolt and the the the, the, the Jason was it Jason or Friday the Thirteenth mask swoosh Jason, right? Bro, they're so iconic that if you see it now, if any you like it's, it a, real real sneakerheads, no, I didn't know who is. the I didn't know who the hell Warren Lotus was before the lawsuit. And um, for, and unfortunately, Nike did it to themselves because as soon as you say I'm um, Nike's got a lawsuit against this guy, this guy, this guy, you always see know what it's about. Now, now, bro, little little nah, you go. The fact I that didn't Nike, know who he was. Yo, exactly. The fact that Nike's going off the little now at this moment in time is and you're seeing the silhouettes more in public, you're gonna instantly know butterflies little now. Like literally, now it's gonna be in, in, in two, three years' time. Oh, remember that guy? Yeah, little now. The little narcotics. You, you know instantly, and unfortunately, as soon as Nike go after people like this, it's it's a household name. Now you're gonna know them. But so, but the thing is, there's there's differences between what copying and pasting the silhouette to 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 recreating rebranding and and creating different color block silhouettes and all of that stuff so, so you, Nike need to sift through and and give it to people that actually are at that creative level to take it to their own level that they know that these ideas will be so unique that they're bringing something to the table and that's what's that that's that's the situation we're talking about is when you say all right cool I love that why don't we do that? And if you constantly keep saying that, then you need to get that guy. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, I'm I'm biased. I'm gonna admit my bias. Cool Kai, for sure. Cool Kai X Nike, for sure. I so from from, lo- from so from last week where we went from talking about Cool Kai and the lawsuit to now to this week talking about Nike, just lease him the the pattern. For fifty percent, or or for thirty or forty, or whatever percentage you want to, uh, what you want to do, um, and negotiate that. And uh, like you said, the fifty percent with in-house, um, in-house manufacturing with the ideas that Cool Kai brings with that Thunderbolt, because that would be another range to the Jordan, and and it was almost, it's almost another range to your own homage sneakers that you do for the Jordan brand. Now you've got a swoosh and a Thunderbolt in-house. And the th- and I know people are gonna just say, "Oh, this was a rip off of the Jordan One. This is this is not a Jordan One." They bought but, Travis. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly, bro. But but it's reputable to a point where everybody knows who Cool Kai is. So they won't be saying, "Oh, this is a rip off." No, it's a Cool Kai. It's a it's a night Cool Kai. Exactly. Is you see what I'm saying? Like, yo, bro. Like, like okay, cool. Let's just let's just. I'm getting hyped. From it because it makes so much <laughs> sense, bro. How the it hell, is. yo, bro? I, t- I keep telling you, Nike, reach out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you need to kind of come talk to us because at the end of the day, we come up with some fantastic ideas, and you need to kind of reach out. Seriously, if you listen to this, you need to reach out. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much light, right, bro? It will be too much light, right? It, well, you know, you know, you know what? It's it's, it's almost like a, a it's almost it's almost like a a eclipse that happens. Every once in a lifetime, when the stars align and everything's perfect, and like I've just opened the door for Nike and Cool Kai and and all the other like Warren Lotus and all that stuff to say, I've opened the door. Just walk through it and do it. Just do it. Just like do you it. guys say, just do it. Exactly, Nike. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I, I, I like love it. it. I'm with it. I, bro, uh, anything, anything inspirational, anything, anything that's um, promoting, anything that's positive, I'm down for, hundred percent down for. I love changing the vibe and changing the game. I want, I want something different. I want something unique. I want something interesting. And this is what catches my attention all the time. This is why I love the sneak, the, the type of sneakers I love. 
because I love uniqueness. I love different things all the time. It's it's always always like going to be that way with me because I love everything gets stale over over time. You keep doing the same things, keep doing the same you keep this this and that, this and that, this and that, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, but you yeah, I'm bored now because like it's the same things. If we keep getting the same retros, if you keep keep getting the same things, oh, I've, I've seen it. I want something unique. Oh, Crimson Bliss. Oh, you got a DJ Khaled 5 Crimson Bliss. Oh, my God. Damn, they're so good. See what I'm saying? Change the game. Change. Be a game changer. Uh, guys, just be game changers. Like, that's, what, that's, that's what you are born to do is change the script, change the game, be unique. Yeah. I'm, I, I, would, I would love to see uh, Cool Kai. Jordan yeah. Brand but that, was, that was my little bit of an inspirational rant today, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, you good. You good. That's what we're here right. for, man. So, um, n- one of our other main topics, bro, is how did you get hold of that sneaker, bro? <laughs> how did you get hold of that sneaker, bro? <laughs> Y'all know. Pull out that video, bro. Pull out that video, bro. Y'all how know did you get hold of that got, <laughs> Y'all know how I got the sneaker. If you watch Shout the video, to the Shout to the bro. <laughs> Y'all know. I'm gonna I'm gonna always give shout outs where it's due. Uh Retro Rick. Retro Rick and Maddie's kicks. Rick get his hands on a lot of stuff. Um we were hoping to be able to get Rick on the show today, but I know I was I was with him yesterday. He had a lot of running around to do today. Um shout out to Naya. His his uh his daughter just got her first job. So um you know he he's at home with his with his girls, um, taking his daughters back and forth to cheerleading practice and dropping off, picking up from work and all that. So he was too busy to be able to uh, jump on the pod today, uh, even though I talked to him this morning. Yeah, but, but um, um, we we just answered. Well, I think we just answered Rick's um, question that we was going to bring to this table anyway about um, the the court because Rick was coming for the cool Kai. Um, yeah, you you you, you need to, you need to tell him to watch this episode, bro, because obviously he's like, yo, bro, go. He watch will. That he 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 watches. He watches. <laughs> um, yeah, he he is aware of of our conversations for sure. But um, <laughs> yeah, he 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 got a hold of uh, the Jordan Three Reimagine that come out in March next year. And it's ironic or coincidental or not that as soon as we started seeing real pictures of the Jordan 3 Reimagine, Nike is now doing a Sneakers Live on a Thursday, same day as the Travis Scott's come out. They're doing a sneakers live with uh, Chase B. Okay. Chase B is Travis Scott's DJ. Okay. Okay. The main topic of that live will be the reimagined Jordan 3. <laughs> it's very interesting. All I'm saying, whoever, whoever did what they did, no faces, no cases. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and we said, I listen, I don't know where the shoes came from, but I know Rick got his hands on them and he was gracious enough. To I, give. I can't, by the way, I can't plead the fifth because we don't have the fifth, but you can plead the fifth, bro. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. But yeah, no, do I. As I said in my video, I know enough about Jordan 3s to know that the sneaker that I had I, I, that I no longer have in my possession was legit. Yep, 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 yep. And yep. I did a video. You'd like to see it? Here it go. Yeah, <laughs> we need to see. Oh no, no, no. Before you before we see it, how many views has it got at the moment? Um uh, about fifteen hundred right now. I'm not oh, that big way, of a YouTuber. You, 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 by the way, your your follower list is blowing up. I, I thought I was qu- catching you, bro, but I'm I'm glad to see the follower list is blowing up. 721. What? Get Q to 1K. We need to see Q at 1K quickly. It's going up a little bit, slowly but surely. Yeah, um, well, we working, man. We work. We constantly working. Exactly. Oh, so y'all did think it was a game. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro. Don't, don't review. Don't review. 
Are we, are we not going to watch my whole review? No, no, no. I just want to see the speaker, bro. <laughs> okay, okay. So let me fast Gio forward. Gio's had an 808 game. Uh, oh, you boy, Cuban Rocker. That, that was a kids. long promotion for me. Building, got a big one today, y'all. Super too, early. The man, I already yeah. know what it is. Shout, shout out to Rick. Shout out to Rick, though, bro. They're definitely, I'm looking at those hoodies. I'm like, yo, no, they're dope. Uh, they're, they're, they're so dope. No, y'all see me. Y'all see me wear retro game mask on the on the podcast every week for the executioner uh, character. <laughs> on <laughs> yo yo yo, you court. didn't say that. You did. You didn't say that right. It's actually Q Q with the emphasis. You know. <laughs> yeah, and y'all Q, y'all will see you know. it. Y'all will see it again <laughs> on this episode, and y'all will continue to see it. Okay, so uh, Retro Rick is a friend, a good friend of mine. Um, Shout out to so the bro, I, Retro. Yeah, I have to, I have to put in my ads every time I get my hands <laughs> on new products. So uh, this hoodie actually, that hoodie's I fire. That hoodie's absolutely yeah, fire, bro. I ain't got to show it on on the. I need, I need a royal blue. Yo, Rick, I need a royal blue hoodie. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> yeah, these these are the pants, and this, bruh, that retro right there. That that this this is. I don't know how they do this. Like his the factory where he get his stuff printed. I don't know how they do that, but it's crazy, bro. I got. I also got a. Um, I got like a a pale green, like a, a barely. A barely green version. That's not a hoodie. It's just a sweatshirt. But this hoodie is super high quality, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I can't find look, the the aglets. He got he got retro branding on the aglets. Where is it? It wouldn't focus on the video. Let me see if I can get it to focus right here. It's focusing on my face. Come on, do what I want you to do. Pull it, pull it away from the camera a bit. Pull it away from the camera a bit. Yeah, you can just about see it. You can just about see it. Yeah, I mean it's, it's bright colored, so you you can. But you know, what, these are metal aglets. Um, yeah. and Rick Rick does um he he wear test all his stuff because when you got your own brand, why not wear your own products? Yeah, you got represent, bro. You got definitely represent. He has washed um that hoodie this this hoodie that uh, I just showed y'all several times. And it's holding up true to form, just like it was brand new. So, yeah, yeah, and definitely, I, I would, I need to invest in some of the merch that that the bro comes out with. Rick is, Rick is probably one of the hardest working people I know, and I work hard definitely. as well, bro. So, um, so shout out to the bro, shout out to your hustle, shout out to your grind, bro. Um, real, real, real respect for that. So the first thing about this uh, reimagined three is. The it's box. got like, yeah, it's got the lost and found vibe. The box, if you if you look at this lost and found box versus the reimagined three box, very very similar. OG style with a twist. It looks aged. It looks beat. It ain't got all the features that the lost and found ones have. But um, look at even the the card. That, that's, yep, yeah, yeah, the, the, the OG, the OG card that used to get back in the day. Yo, bro, that's dope. You know, you know what I loved. You know why I love these cards? It's an educational lesson. It's an yeah. ed- educational lesson for you guys to know what's in your sneakers that you're wearing. And a lot of people don't know. And I love this because basically they're reintroducing it over the years. But I love this because basically it means somebody new that's picking up this sneaker uh, will pick that up and say, "Okay, cool. I've learned something today. I know what's what's in my sneaker." Yeah. Even the inside of the box has got the wear and tear effect. Yeah, the, in- the inside of this box is not the same. Like, see, that's different. Because the, the reason why they did that to the box is that box is a, a like, Jordan 3, Jordan 4, Jordan 5, Jordan 3, 4, 5s, and some 6s come in the same box. Like, those boxes are iconic to those to those sneakers. And if you open up a Jordan, if you open up a, like a Jordan 5 box, it will have that in the inside. And it's already in the inside, so rather than just leaving it all red, they kind of de-stressed it, which actually brings more of that authenticated. Are they calling it reimagination, or is it going to be like a another lost and found? Because they might change the name close to the date. They could change the name. Um, the name that we've been seeing though is reimagine. Yeah, we, which we have seen before. Um, elephant paper, normal elephant paper on yep, the yep, inside yep. with that extra little bit of um, white paper. 
and this this pretty much a legit check at this point. Um, and that was my whole um, idea behind the video, having it so early to be able to give people legit check advice. Yeah, bro, bro bring out the sneaker, bro. <laughs> the cut on that sneaker is crazy, bro. And the most important thing about just the, the build of the sneaker is we have Widow's Peaks. Yep, yep, yep. It's very important to know because any anybody that, that owns threes currently, um more recent Jordan threes, they went away from the widow's peaks. Matter of fact, let me let me pull out a pair I'm, of threes. I'm, I'm, too. Bring, I'm bringing out my fire reds, bro. Or, or no, yeah, not fire reds. Bring out your fire reds, bro, because basically that's a good indication. So, in comparison, we see this is the Fire Red 3 box. Red on the inside, just like on the Reimagine, but it's not distressed. Perfectly uh, painted red. The bottom, elephant print, just like on the Reimagine. Elephant print paper. Also, the extra white paper. Guys, if you are watching or if you are listening to this, go and check out the YouTube um, podcast. It's got visuals so you can actually get a better representation of what Q's talking about. And we do not have Widow's Peaks. We got the, the Widow's Peak here. Yeah, th- th- this is what this is what I'm gonna, I was going to say. All, not all the Widow's no Peak. Widow's Peak here. Yeah, normally you don't get no Widow's Peaks on Jordan Freeze. Normally, right. you never get Widow's Peak on Jordan 3. Even the Fire Red 3 had Widow's Peak. So you, it's going to... Well, for, for, for me, for me, it's a... Example of rebranding in different... Or not rebranding. It's an example of production in different, different places now. Because that Widow's Peak... You know what this is, bro? I, I think I was right. I what? think... Remember, remember we talked about... When we talked about a cut maybe a month ago on the podcast, I said so Nike need to Nike Nike need to go and hire um, Nike need to go and hire the UA companies with, that were producing their sneakers and make them legit. Remember that conversation, bro? Yeah. That I think those with those peak to me is is a statement of yeah they probably have gone and done that. Because only the only prior to prior to some of these releases, the only places we saw Widow's Peak was in UAs, bro. Yeah, and that that was an indication on whether or not your your shoes were authentic or not. But but when but we, now when the, we're looking at this, we imagine they actually going back because the originals had the widow's peaks and they went yeah. away from it. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah. bringing back the original vibe, but the originals were not bone or sale on the midsole, on, bro. On yeah. the backpack, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna say this. That looks. Dope, bro. Dope, bro. Yeah. I mean, it, it. Let me let me get to a better look at the the back tab. Woo! With the with the sale, and also the middle eyelets. The very yeah, the top one eyelets. is black. The bottom eyelets are red, but the middle eyelets are also sailed sale. out. So, how uh, how tempted were you to keep that sneaker, bro? Let's just be honest. Very. Uh, especially <laughs> because it's a 10 and a half. It, this, this pair that I review is a 10 and a half, which is a half size down from my size. I really, really wanted to keep it. But um, I, ain't, I ain't got 500. <laughs> I got it, but not for one shoe. Okay, cool. The big question here now: everybody's asking you at this moment in time. They're looking into this. They're looking into this screen on YouTube. They're listening to you right this moment in time, and they are ask, they are asking the question. They're gonna say, "Q, brother Q, how? First of all, dope is that pair, and second. 
In your opinion, how easy will it be to get next year? <sighs> Two questions, bro, that they're going to ask you. Two questions. Anybody that they know you've got that in hand, they know how much Rick's paid for it. You, you, you know how much Rick's paid for it. You, you know what that sneaker's like. You know the, the, the execution on that sneaker. You know what the cut is like. You've got that in hand. Now, bro, how easy will that be to get next year when it comes out on, on release date? And we're talking about, and we, we talked about this outside the podcast before. That's coming out in March, but we've kind of, we think that this might be the all-star sneaker for all-star weekend sneaker in February, yeah. end of February. How easy? Hard, e- easy, medium, hard. I'm, I'm somewhere between medium and hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think so. Because because the Fire Red 3 was not as difficult as we initially thought it was going to be. Because yep. of the amount of pairs, I think there were more pairs than the Lost and Found of the Fire Red 3. I yep. also think there will be more pairs, about the same amount of Fire Red 3s for this Reimagined 3. But I think everybody's looking but, forward to that. Yeah, but, everybody's looking for Yeah, the big butt equation, bro. How yo, big is that butt? <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I think, I think, I think people, because it's the white cement. Yep. yep, yep. We can call it reimagined, but it's the white cement. Yep, 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 yep. And when yep. when was the last time we saw white cement? 2017, 16? Yep. In 2023, a lot of people's white cements are done. I don't have white cements because I knew they were coming back. I didn't bother to even look go for back. them on the yep, aftermarket. Yeah, because yep. I probably would have had to do some of uh, a lot of cleaning, deep cleaning and repainting and not, and I just started painting, y'all know. Um <laughs> I think I think it's gonna be somewhere. I think it'll be harder, definitely harder than the Fire Red Three. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Any anything's gonna be hard, harder than Fire Red Three. I I I think from your expression um, and what you just said, it's going to be. It's not going to be as difficult as the Lost and Founds. No, but they will sell out. They is 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 that is is that sneaker that you don't want to sleep on. You don't want to sleep on. Absolutely I'll be, not. I'll be Classic. slightly surprised. I'll be slightly surprised if they sit or restock as much as the fire. As a fire, yeah, 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 yeah. But because because it'll be post holiday season. I think everyone who's getting pairs, meaning uh, retail stores, <coughs> all the all the all the retail stores that are getting pairs will get them on time. Yep, 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 yep. There will be a full family size run. They will go up to <coughs> size probably seventeen or eighteen, maybe on the bell curve, uh, which means sizes. 13 and 14 will be more available than usual. Yeah, Cam Cam can get Cam can get you sized in. Yeah, we're gonna make sure Cam get a pair. We're gonna make we but, we gonna do we're gonna do everything we always do to make sure all the bros get We're their gonna pair. do we're gonna do what we did with the lost and found. We're gonna do we're gonna do what we yeah, did with the lost and found. Everybody we, we got paid. Me and you are primarily the guys in our circles that give out the most assists. You know, we 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 Chris Paul and Jason Kidd respectively for for our <laughs> I, I, I think I think I think I think got a shout out Scott Simpson. He's done a lot more this year. So Scott Scott Yeah Scott Scott, Scott, Scott shout out to Scott too man. Yeah. Um, Scott Scott get, he get his hands on a lot of stuff pretty easy too. Scott need to <laughs> yeah I, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> but, but, but also, I'm glad. I'm glad this is coming out. I've got the free throw lines. I need a white cement freeze. Um, I might contemplate doubling up on that and rocking it straight off the bat because, yo, that's such a dope sneaker. Bro. And it's easy. It's easy to rock because it's mostly white. Yeah, there's some black. Yeah, there's some red. 
but it's mostly white. So um, the, the only one I'm missing now, bro, is is the true blues. The only thing I'm missing now will be the true blues after after the white cement freeze. But, I still need like, black cements. They'll come, they'll come, they'll come, they'll come, they'll definitely come in. Uh, they might but, come in 24. Yeah, I I've 20 like I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a prime example. When did it they came out last in 2018, didn't they? The black cement freeze. Yeah. Right. Now, do you know how I always mention this is another sidebar, guys? Um, you know how I always mention um the fact that it's really interesting to see the strategies we talk about all the time. Look at strategy, look at releases, look at strategy, look at releases. That's what I always emphasize. When did the Chicago's come out last, bro? 15. When did they come out this year? 2022, yeah? When mm-hmm. did the white cement the white cement freeze come out last? I want to say 16. Let me just double check that we talk. Okay, cool. But we see we've seen we, if it's if it did come out in 2016, we're seeing it in 2023. It's like a bit of an indication of what Nike's release calendar will be for future releases. Yeah, six, That's seven years. Saying. No, yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, it's really interesting to see when the, when the Chicago came out, when the other releases came out as well, because it, it kind of it always somehow mimics releases. Was it, it? It was the same thing with the with the with the with the Space Jams. We saw the Space Jams, Concords, Breads, Cool Greys. It, it it works in cycles. It works in cycles. It kind of that happens, bro. Yeah, we getting we getting uh, UNC next UNC Elevens next year. Legend Blue, whatever you want to call it. Um, we saw those last in twenty fourteen, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 2014, we're getting them back in 23. So sometimes because because they, they did the Jubilee, because they did the Cherry, it got thrown off by a couple years. But on average, with the OGs, I'll just say seven years. Okay, the, cool. the more, I... um, go, go, keep going. The more uh, GR colorways, like the the green bean, um, for example, you do, you you can't really predict it because I think they gauge OGs OG colorways different than they gauge the new GR colorways, like the um, the Citrus Seven. We saw a longer time in between the release of the 2022 and the last release. Uh, the Flint 7, the the COJP 1s, we see longer times in between the releases. But with the OGs, you can kind of guess seven years yeah, yeah, yeah. in between the next time you'll see that shoe come around. I said, it's telling me 2013, bro. 13 for the 11s? Oh, for for the white cement freeze. White cement thirteen, really? Yeah, apparently. Hold on, uh, it blows my theory out the window. <laughs> I'm just double checking at this moment in time as we're speaking. But like, um, apparently, yeah, that's that's when the last came out. Uh, okay, uh, let me just, just double I'm check that. About something else then. You must be. You must be. I, I I didn't realize that myself. It's just been such a long time. It's been ten years, bro. Ten years. Okay. Okay. So so let's let's go. Let's go between six and ten average. Yeah. Between six and ten years average between a re-release and the last release. But um the last release had Nike Air on the back. This release will have Nike Air on the back. Yep, yep. Um and and for for the sneakers that don't have Nike Air on the the physical shoe whether it be the outsole or back tab or whatever you can look to that insole and see nike air once again versus the jump man like on these cherry 11s it's a jump man on the inside Mm -hmm. if you look at the concords space jams the cool grays the the braid 11s nike air on the insole Yep, yep 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 which is a great thing because we now we're getting that Nike branding back 
like we wanted it. We getting the OG specs, even with the the Cardinal Sevens, which you already have. Ooh, yeah, years, yeah. For years, Jordan Sevens had full length air. Guess what? OG Sevens didn't have full length air. They just, yeah, they've gone back. They've gone back, gone back to it. I was so confident that two, the 2016 date was spot on. I was like, yeah, 2016. I didn't realize 2010, 10 years, bro. 10 years. You yeah. must be talking. You must be thinking about the different sneaker. But bro, like, I'm I'm happy that White Cement Freeze are actually releasing. But definitely, what strategies? Definitely, what strategies? Um, I I think the I I believe after the Legend Blues, they will release, and then after that, the next OG to release will be the Space Jams. I think yeah, I they, uh, I, I think I, I and I hope they do it just like they did when it in that when it last came out with the box with the Bugs Bunny 23 at the front or that bro that that's a dope release. Please, please, please just give it to us like that because that's the that's that packaging is crazy. Space jam or cap and gown. Yeah. And that's, maybe, I, I think I think Maybe they'll go gamma to break it up in between. Put a, put a non OG in I between. I don't. I don't think. I don't think we'll see the Kappa gamma ever again. I I think what? we'll see the gammas. I think yeah. I think we will never see the cap and gowns. If we see the cap and gowns, we're gonna see a full all black Jordan Eleven. They call it the black. They will call it the black cat. Uh, yeah, they call it the all, all black or black cat eleven. Bro, they they will. Li- I think we'll never see the cap and gown again. That's just a one and done um, sneaker. I think we're more likely to see the, to see the gammas. Or the Space Jams after the after the Legend Blues, and I think it's Space. Get, don't get me wrong. Didn't Space Jams come out in 2016? Yeah, yeah. So I I, I think um I'm your bro. Unless we're getting dates wrong, completely wrong here. But yeah, Space Jams came out in 2016, and I, I've got a pair of Space Jams from that original release. It's been a while now, bro. It's coming. It's coming up to that point where you're like, yeah. It's I like, still want the cap and gown uh, five lows from 2021, mm-hmm. but a lot of people didn't. As as much as people, I've never seen that shoe on foot. I don't see people posting about it. I don't see nobody, hear nobody talking about it. But it was hard to get when it yeah. released. And I was pissed when I couldn't get that shoe. Really pissed when I couldn't get that shoe, yeah. man. I, I might, what? I might need to, I might need to rock my space jams pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Look, I started to wear my breads yesterday to, to, to pick up all the cherries. I said, "Nah, that'll be a big troll." Bro. <laughs> <laughs> I did see, I, did see uh, I saw maybe three people wearing breads yesterday to pick up the eleven. So. Shout out, shout I, out to everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm going to still say this. Right? I'm still going to say this to this day. I love the Concords. Love all the other 11s, but Bread 11. Sheesh, bro. Yeah, that's my favorite 11. That's my favorite As you can 11. see, as you can see, I love red and black. <laughs> hey. those, those are the colors you'll see me wearing most of the time. Red and black. Yeah. So... Okay, next last main subject is SneakerCon. SneakerCon London. So uh, if you guys didn't know, SneakerCon London happened this weekend on Saturday. I met up with the bros, um, Scott Simpson, shout out to the bro, and Delroy. Oh, Del, I'll call him. Uh, shout out to the bro. Uh, we met uh, Cooks uh, from Trainer Heads. Shout out to the whole movement with Trainer Heads. Amazing people. Shout out, Greg. We coming for you, Steve. Yeah, shout out to Steve. I already talked talk, talk to Cooks about um I've been I've been having conversation with the bros and the sis um about coming on on the podcast. Um it's about a month now. They're ready to come on whenever we are. So uh, they need to just find make sure they're all available to come on. So that would be quite good to get two, three people in, in the podcast and have that conversation. Um if you don't know how it's what? gonna go, but we'll watch 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 the to subscribe to Trainer Heads. Subscribe watch, to Trainer Heads. Uh, watch the interview, the Trainer Heads interview with TJ. Please. Yep, yep. Go, go. No, watch, watch all their content. They, they, they do amazing work. They, they're fun. They're very down to earth people, and I'm surprised they're not as. Big, I'm surprised they're not bigger than they are. And I hope that guys go, go follow the guy. Go follow the family. Um, they're proper, proper people, and yeah. I, I love, love meeting up with them. Love talking to them. They, they're so genuine. So, so down to earth as well. Um, so yeah. They, so my m- mate, I would cooks. Um, sneaker con, it's not the same. 
Definitely not the same as you guys get it. Um, the first time I went into SneakCon was ages ago. When it first ever came to London, and when SneakCon was very really popular, it was packed. It was ram packed. Same same place, ram packed. You couldn't move anywhere. This time, either it's due to the ticket price or the weather, not a lot of people came out. People mm. through the community that I know came there, came through, we talked. Not a lot of people came out. It was quite empty at the start. It got a bit more packed and it kind of started to fade away at the end. Um, you saw the normal stuff. Normally, with, with stuff like that, you see the you see some old stuff. Obviously, I wore, wore my Dawnbaker 6s. I only saw one Dawnbaker 6 for sale there. Everything else was... The, the the stuff that's come over out during COVID and the last couple of years is very new stuff. Um, and then I, in that sense, I think Scott wore white cement fours. Adele wore um, he's um, Jordan one. I can't remember what they're called now. The green, the green ones with the red laces. Um, pine green. Fucking, yeah, no, no, no. Was it pine green? Yeah, probably, probably pine green. Black and green, red laces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pine green two point oh. You could probably use Pine Green 2.0. I totally forgot what the name was. Yeah, I got I got I got a pair. That's what it is. Pine Green 2.0. Yeah. Black and green, uh bread, bread color no, block. No, it's not it's not black and green. It's it's not it's I don't think it's a pine green dog. I totally forgot. Dell did mention Lucky it. Lucky green, just, white and green. green. That's the one. Lucky green, sorry. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so, apologies. Um, but yeah, it's, um and then I had the Dawnbaker sixes on and um yeah, bro, did did my 19k steps in that, bro. And such a comfortable sneaker, such a comfortable sneaker. And it's so beautiful, so beautiful, such a beautiful. You said nineteen. Okay, yeah. We walked. We walked quite a bit. We walked quite a bit. Um, a we, we literally. We we came. We came out. Went to went to a couple. Went to a place to eat. Came back. Walked. Walked to walked to a station. Got clothes. Walked to another station around the corner. We literally came in the co- covered nearly twenty k steps. And then um, we was like, "Yep, it's time to retire these sneakers for another six months." <laughs> <laughs> it's got enough steps in it, um, and yeah. fuse, and then yeah. But yeah, l- lucky yeah, Del wore lucky greens. I wore I wore the Dorbeck six and, and Scott wore the white with cement fours. Um, but just so good. Do you know what? I went there because the bro from the states came over. AJ in Chicago, go follow the bro. Such an amazing person, and he's starting his own podcast up with, uh, I think iHeart, um, Radio. For um, mm. for he's so he's doing some big stuff. He t- he he did a little bit of an interview with me, Dell Cooks, um, to go on that podcast. So go and check that out, guys. Um, we might we might get some attraction from that as well, which is which is awesome. But um, yeah, we had a good conversation. Finally, got to hold some Chicago 1985s in hand, bro. Because AJ in Chicago, if you don't know him, he has a lot of 1985s in his rotation, bro. He knows. You know what? He knows. I know him. Yes, you do, bro, because he came on Cam. He, he met Cam. No, um, he's been at SneakerCon Atlanta. I didn't know who he was. Yep, he knows. Like, he, he knows. He, he knows. He he eBay. Last case, right? Yeah, I don't think he did. Um, maybe not. He, he literally had look, bro. He took him out of his bag, and he handed him to us. Hey, bro, go and check. Is it my a- story. AJS? AJS Kicks? Is that his no, name? No, AJ. Okay, okay, it's AJ okay. in Chicago. That's his whole okay. handle. Let yeah. me make sure. Let me make sure. Go ahead, though, bro. But, bro, saw some 85 Chicago. Had a conversation with a bro. Very dope. Met a lot of lot of bros um, in, in the event. Like, bro, it's so dope to actually meet people. I didn't go there to buy anything. I went there to meet people and, and kind of be social um, because it's always, always awesome to kind of pull up at these events and kind of have have like meet just meet and greets it's so good so so good um the, the vibe was so good like just to just to kind of just have that conversation to meet the bro for the first time um and see with some of the amazing stuff he's doing so it's so good to do so 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 good like to just to do that i, I didn't i was going to record stuff from sneaker Con, but i didn't because i was kind of almost like not worth it in terms of just what was there it was i was hoping to see what i saw 5 years back when it first came here um no more than that it actually it was 6 or 7 years back when it first came here it was i think it was dope like the the whole concept of and that 
for me, was when the wave of the sneakers was actually building up in the UK in terms of the hype and the notoriety of sneakers. Um, that, to me, the queue went round the block and we waited hours to get in. Mm. That, that was special. This one was like, yeah, it's it, it's almost like the, the nostalgia is gone. Um, but I don't think eBay could get everything they wanted to come over from the States to the UK, which was a bit sad. But we saw the eBay dunks there as well, eBay SP dunk lows there as well. So that was that was some, a nice thing. There's a couple of good things there, definitely a couple of good things. But obviously, I did think they have, uh, did they have panels like like uh. EBay yeah, panels. yeah, they had a they, 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 they had an auction and a little couple of panels there, we, which we stayed on for. It was good. It was good for what it was good, it, but it was more of a good meet and greet in terms of going to see people and seeing how they are, um, and chatting and networking and all that stuff. I saw I saw a couple of couple of people I talked to definitely come out and say hi. Um, obviously, you, you, there's all diversity amount. There are diversity people come through and have a look. There's new sneaker heads. It was really iconic. It was written. Really, no, it's really ironic because we was on the train and we saw people wearing like uh, infrared sixes and all of that stuff. And we instantly knew they were coming to the event. Um, we got to, we talk, got talking to a couple of people. Um, uh, like we, like the conversation, like, Oh, you're going to sneak, you sneak on. Yeah. We're going to sneak on blah, blah, blah. blah. And they were talking about lost and founds, how they didn't get, none of them got lost and founds. And they just turned around to us and said, Oh, did you guys get the lost and founds? Yeah, we all got lost and founds. Um, <laughs> but, but, but <laughs> unfortunately, I, I, I was hoping everybody would have got, some, got those lost and founds. But you could, they were, I think they're just getting into the game, which which is great because it is like you seeing new faces, new people. And what, what they were wearing, you could tell infrared sixes the guy had quite old pair of infrared sixes so he must have been picking up sneakers on the con- on the constant someone well, uh, the other guy had uh black uh or what you call it canvas fours on um so that that was like a bit of an eye open okay new sne- these are these are new sneaker heads um you know it, it kind of you know send me know if they're if they're collectors or if or what kind of sneaker they are by the sneakers they wear. There's a lot of new there's a lot of new young people wearing new stuff. And obviously that's like, yeah, you're 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 starting to get into sneakers like maybe I was six or seven years ago. But now it's like you're gonna start finding yourself, you're gonna start picking up sneakers. And it's always good to see that journey as well, because the next event, the next event you might see them and you might talk to them. But um that was good. SneakerCon was good to meet people and hopefully you see some of that. I, I think um our bio is going to get linked um, onto AJ and Chicago's um, podcast on, on YouTube. So watch out for that, guys. I will link it in my in, uh, in, in my socials to show you guys that whole interview. It was good. It, it was supposed to be a 15-minute thing, but you know how it is. It turns out to be like half an hour to 45, 45 minutes when you start talking and you start talking about stuff. Um, but yeah, that was good. But the really interesting stuff happened after SneakCon because we went, start, we went to hunt for the cherry gs sizes we went we went to marble arch uh at where Foot Locker, we we got the we we actually picked up the sneaker but, but really interesting before we went to Foot Locker, we went to a resale shop opposite yeah. it and they were selling taxis for 350 bro they were selling they were, yeah 350 350 pounds they were selling taxis and taxis you still can get they were selling sneakers gr sneakers bro there was no hype gr sneakers for over overinflated prices, and I was like, "Is it ironic that you guys are right opposite that shop there, which is Foot Locker, which you can walk in, buy the stock, and come into your shop and display the stock?" It's really that that kind of got to me because some of the sneakers that they were selling they were still sitting, and they were selling them for like a hundred, two hundred pounds on top of what their value is, and they still got people in there, bro. They still got people in there. Like they got, they got little. These, these, these are probably like people that don't know about sneakers. They're going with their kids to look at sneakers, and the kids want them. And oh, I like that. And then they look at the price. Okay, here you got it. And it's like that's what the shops are designed for. But if you're a true sneaker, head, like me, Dell, and Scott, where we went in, like looked at it and think, and we thought, okay, now we're gonna walk out. <laughs> it, but it was, it was set up like a normal retail shop foot site. But you walk in, and when you start seeing stuff that's sold out, that's sitting in that shop, you instantly realize it's a resource shop. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and any 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 other person that's naive to that situation would be like, oh, okay, D, this is a retail shop. Because it's, they sell merchandise, they sell clothing, they sell sneakers, but it's set up in a way that it actually does look like a retail shop. So anybody that's walking in through there, thinking, they're probably thinking, oh, this is a retail shop, these are normal prices. No, bro, they're not the normal strategy. prices. The strategy, the strategy, the strategy some of these guys go to sell their sneakers is crazy. But, the, the 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 amazing story was was in Foot Locker, um, and uh, one of the young one of the young people that worked there. You can tell they're young. They don't they don't they know their sneakers and they're learning their sneakers, and it's amazing to educate them. We were standing there, and the guy looks at like looks at my DB sixes and says, "What are those?" And I goes, "Oh, they're um they're Dornbecker sixes," and he was like, "Dornbecker sixes," and he's like, "I instantly know." That Dawn Becker name, I know that's a crazy sneaker. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we started talking a bit, a bit about it. And he goes, I'll be scared to wear that. I said, bro, don't be scared to wear sneakers. Like, and this, and Del was like, so don't be always scared to wear sneakers. Yeah, he says, just a shoe, wear it, wear it. And I said, yeah, but still, it's about 1K, 1.5K. I said, yeah, but it, it just if, you, if you're comfortable wearing it, you should just wear it. Like, it, it, the value of the sneaker doesn't, doesn't represent what the sneaker, see, sneaker that's, is. That's, that's, that's the issue that I have with sneakerheads in general. <laughs> Bro, I'm not buying, like we talked about the eBay dunks. I, I think- I'm wearing I don't know, that I, shoe, I, bro. I, I, I think, I, I, the eBay dunks a bit different for me. It's just more of a showpiece. But um, I would, I would, uh, you, I, yeah, I, I think, I think it needs to be worn by the right people. This is why I will never go for it. Um, but I think from my perspective, the fact that he's young, he hasn't, he has, he's not, he's, he's, work, he's a Foot Locker employee. Obviously, they don't get paid as much as what we would get paid at this moment in time because we're older. We'd, we've gone through, uh, we've gone through the, the ladder, as you say, and we've got a certain point where we can actually pick up little sneakers we want and stuff like that. Um, he's obviously growing. He's obviously getting into the game. He's obviously not earning as much money. And for him, from his perspective, is like, I'll be scared to wear a 1K sneaker because 1K to him, has a lot more value than potentially 1K has to us because even though 1K is a lot, to him it's a lot, 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 lot more. See what I'm saying? Well, I I, I get it from um from an earning perspective, but once you got it, like why did you get it? Did you get it to be able to say that you have it, or no. do you wear <laughs> sneakers? You gotta wear sneakers, bro. You gotta wear sneakers. Like it's. Ain't nobody trying to go out unless you're on the beach or or the swimming pool or the bathtub. Put some shoes on. It's to me. To me, it was a wholesome story. It's it's quite nice. Like the, the, the thing is, it's like a more of an educational thing. We talked about we talked about the Dawn Maker Society like Foundation and all that stuff. And so he got a bit more of a ref, ref, like a a reference of what that kind of company was. No, but he knew he knew that's all he knew what the Dawn. Yeah, he knew what the Dawnbecker fours were. He knew he knew what the Dawnbecker. Uh, I don't think he he knows the Dawnbecker four, maybe the fives, but that's it. Yeah, I'm. Um, see, when we finish, which we need to do because we had two and a half hours. <laughs> uh, when we, when we finish and I go out to get food, you gonna make me put something on that I ain't put on in a while. Just just from hearing that story. Because I'm not buying stuff just to say I got it or just to have it to display. Like, this ain't no museum, bro. This, no, no, this no, my no, studio. No. This is where I do my work. Um, but I buy my shoes to wear my shoes. By the way, Shoe Dog Museum coming to a no. outlet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, no, I mean, look, shout out, shout out to him. Um, but I ho- hopefully that's not his mindset moving forward. Like I understand yeah. you saying, um, I'm scared to wear it because I don't want to mess it up. But th- this is one thing I don't like about um sneakers that go up in value like that. It's you ha- you do have people that will sit there and be reluctant to wear a sneaker because of the cost of it. And I and I do understand that. I do understand that because. Even though I, I, you gotta be careful where you wear them. You do hundred percent gotta be careful where you wear them. Um, but like in that retrospect, I do understand the reluctance to put. It's like almost saying, 
I'm gonna put a 20k watch on my on my hand and walk around, walk out with it, and all of a sudden you get you get robbed or, or so you get come into a situation because of it. Uh, from that from that perspective, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. I'm, I'm about to wear my Sashiko Forest. <laughs> hey, this, hey, this is, this is a $500 shoe right here. 500. Only, I've only worn it once. I'm about to wear it to go get some chicken. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call that the chicken flipper force for you, bro. Chicken flipper force. <laughs> chicken flipper. <laughs> chicken flipper force. Jeez, yeah. that's a, that, about, that's, that's a hard today. Yeah, just to go yeah, get yeah. some chicken and come back home and eat my chicken. I ain't going nowhere else today. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was the main topics. That was the, basically the breakdowns of of the main topics. The quick strikes and the main topics. But you know what time is now, bro? Uh mm-hmm. huh. <laughs> Let's go in, bro. Let's do it. When resale is too high. Damn resale. Hold on. Hold on. When hype beats go too far. These damn hype beats. Order. Order in the court. Order. When the back door opens. Guilty. It's time for. Order in the court. The sneaker court of public Guilty. opinion. Guilty. <laughs> Guilty. Okay, we got two cases on the docket today. Let's make them quick and easy and fire round. First up is concept second attempt at that release for the orange lobsters. I heard of the phrase: if you try, if you if you try, you got to try again. If you fail, because you can always succeed. But this is try, 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 try again and fail again, and this is not good because at the end of the day, that release was again botched up, and it deserves the. It de- it deserves a cancellation on that release because at the end of the day, how can you go in a second time and mess it up a second time again? Cheeks. That release was pure cheeks, bro. Dirty Ex- cheeks. Ex- <laughs> Swampy cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Muddy cheeks. <laughs> Muddy that cheeks, was bro. so Bad, bro. And the fact, the fact that they actually, did, I think the second raffle was done because the first raffle they realized there was lots of bots and they kind of cancelled a lot of orders and they re-raffled the the first release again. But they just did the same same mistake again, bro. It's like, what was the point? Just give it to them. Just hand it to them. Like you, you know, I don't understand that at all, bro. Like getting it wrong a second time. I thought you're supposed to learn from your mistakes. Apparently they didn't learn. They maybe they they I don't know, bro. This is bad. Okay, it's on bad. that back to school you go on that release because at the end of the day you need to be educated. They, this deserves the shoe dog book of annihilation. I'm gonna call it. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. Make sure book. you. Yeah, big book. Make, yeah, this do do it better. Like I know it caught like. How would you do that release better? Like, you, you did it once, it didn't work. You did it twice, it didn't work. How would you do it? They need to talk to somebody that do it right. Yeah, talk to Amman Munya. They do it right. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, second case on the docket, guys. And this one is brought to light today as we were talking on the podcast. And today we're talking about sneakheads. And their bad behavior. So, bro, I'm going to give you the mic to talk about the situation and bring it to light. It's leather and rubber. Okay. Leather and rubber is not and foam. And foam. And so, <laughs> the, the foam was being a bit jealous because you never mentioned it, you know. <laughs> you know leather, what? rubber, foam. The tri- I'm, I'm trifecta. sorry. I apologize to polyurethane. <laughs> it's, leather, it's leather, rubber, and polyurethane foam. Okay, <laughs> yo, ain't ain't none of this stuff worth a life taken? It's not worth the time that you will have to spend in a place that you don't want to be. It, it, I mean, 
Why? Why do I have to worry about bringing a weapon to a sneaker release to protect myself from people that are willing to go to the extreme to spend money on a product that would deteriorate over time? Yep. And at the end of the day, it's it's like who are you trying to impress so badly? What what benefit are you are you gaining? from risking lives out here in these first come first serve lines. I don't understand it. I will never understand it. You can't explain it. You can't. Ain't no, ain't no words you can say that'll make me understand whether it be nostalgia, whether it be clout or fame or whatever the case is, ain't no words to explain your actions when it comes to threatening and participating in violence to get yeah, yeah. a damn shoe. You know, you know what the funny thing is also with that is as soon as that situation happens, your your whole thing's getting locked down. And there's no sneakers for nobody. Ain't nobody Literally. getting nothing. Truly. And, and like for those people that actually go there with their intention to kind of like um cause like, those type like let me rephrase it. You woke up late. Your fault. Mm-hmm. You do, you're not in the front of the queue because you woke up late. Your fault. You get up to go and jump the queue. Your fault. And now you cancel everybody's release because of your mistake. That's dumb on you. Yeah. If anything, and I'm not condoning violence, but if anything, you should be the one getting threatened for causing a disruption and shutting down the release and preventing people that did what they were supposed to do to get the sneaker. You deserve that extra $100, $150 that the resellers are going to charge you. You are the reason why resellers charge $350, $400 for a $200 product. It's you. <laughs> Because yeah. you're preventing people that are willing to put in the time and the effort to do it the right way have to end up going. Now, we don't have enough of these products sometimes. Yeah, of course we don't. But if you don't know that and you're not putting in the work, you can't blame your reseller or your plug. You can't blame the other people in line for doing what they were supposed to do. It's exactly. Your fault. And, and on that, that... <laughs> guilty. Don't be that sneakerhead that actually is causing that ruckus and that chaos. Be better, do better, seek better. That's all I'm gonna say. Don't be a sheep to consumerism. That's don't the bottom be, line. Don't don't blame the shoe dogs because you're a shoe raccoon. You dirty trash panda. <laughs> when resale is too high. Damn resale. Hold up, hold up. When hype beats go too far. These damn hype beats. Hold up, hold up in the court, hold up. The back door opens. Guilty. It's time for. Order in the court. The sneaker court of public Guilty. opinion. Okay, guys, I've got some wig in my beard, apparently. So, okay, <laughs> I hate this wig. I hate this wig. All right, okay. Um... <laughs> wig in my beard. <laughs> wig in my beard. That, that, you know what? That's the, that's the, that is the title for this podcast, Wig in My Beard. <laughs> you took that right out of my brain, bro. I wasn't going to say it, but that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so that was the court case for this week. A roundup. I'm going to introduce a little segment at the end. The roundup for this podcast today is be a good sneakerhead, be better, do better. And Nike, royalties is a thing. Make sure you get the right people in the right places to get the right product issued. That's a great idea that we came up with today. Guys, so much potential out there. 
for the guys who are actually manufacturing and if you want to call it buying off your sneaker, give them the royalty, get, get, pay, make them pay royalties, lease out your pattern. Easy as that. Done situation. Um, but that was the podcast today. We saw a lot of things, white lobsters. We saw some samples. We obviously talked about a lot of subjects, a lot of releases. End of year is coming. Sneaker of the year is going to be showcased from us in the new year or Christmas new year. But yeah, guys, keep it real. Be yourself, be unique and be awesome. For me, from Q, do you want to break it down, bro? No, go ahead, that bro. You're already there. You already no, there. No. Let's go. <laughs> that was a break. That was the breakdown for the shooter podcast. I'm taking some limelight out of Q today because he was breaking oh. it down. But that was a roundup. This we're going to try and do this more often at the end of the show, just to get just to guy go through what we talked about today. Because sometimes you want to know on reflection what you should be, what you should be doing. But yes, enjoy life. Have an awesome time. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome week, year, month, and basically be the best you can be. From me. From Q, hope you have an amazing week, amazing month, and an amazing year. And I hope you guys cop the sneakers you like because you all deserve to get the sneakers you want. And love and peace to everybody, guys. Enjoy the weather. Enjoy this. Enjoy the season, bro. Peace out. <laughs> peace. Peace out. Peace.